the New York Giants are an absolute mess. And yes, I know this guy may have won coach of the year last season, but for the next 10 years, they've hired me to build them a dynasty. And just a quick shout out to all of you, because last video asked for 300 likes and you did that in a day. Yeah, we're actually kind of built different. <laughs> so let's take it up a little bit. Let's try to hit 400 likes on today's video. That would help the channel out a ton. And while you're down there, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, that would also mean the world and enjoy. And my goodness, where do I even start with this team? And look, I'm probably on the unpopular side here, but I'll say it, I kind of like Danny Dimes. However, if you were to ask me if he's worth the contract they gave him, hell no. And this season so far has just been bad news on bad news on bad news for Giants fans. But they got another one. Daniel Jones has now officially torn his ACL, gonna be out for the whole season. And with the Giants being two and seven, a really good looking quarterback class, and just for the overall flexibility of a 10 year rebuild for us today, I think it's gonna be wise to move on from Daniel Jones. The problem, however, is he did just get a new contract. So if we were to release or trade him, we would incur a penalty of 130 freaking mil. So we will not be doing that <laughs> yet. And Giants fans are also like, it's okay if Danny Dimes is out. We got Tyrod Taylor, at least as a backup. He's a pretty good one. Nope, because he's freaking on IR too. So for two weeks straight, we have literally seen this guy playing quarterback. What even is his name? Tommy DeVito. Who the f*** is that guy? <laughs> At running back, of course, we got Saquon Barkley, and if there was a visual representation I could give you to describe him on this offense, it would be this. And as great as Saquon still is, injury after injury, I think it's pretty clear to see he's lost a bit of that burst and that explosiveness that he once had. And 26 years old in running back years is like 57. <laughs> Which I guess is why the Giants ended up franchise tagging him instead of giving him a long-term contract. And after seeing the Giants pay Darren Waller, give Danny Dimes a big contract extension, it's gotta be a little disheartening for Saquon, right? Especially because in my opinion, he's the engine of this offense. He is the puzzle piece that makes it all work. Luckily for us though, in the world of Madden rebuilds, we have the luxury of having zero injuries and him being 26 years old means there could even still be room for improvement as well so i'm gonna give him the contract he deserves and one of my goals in this video is to see him heist the lombardi trophy in a giants uniform now this wide receiver room to me is so odd because i feel like all of these guys would be a good option for a wide receiver three or wide receiver four but they just don't really have that clear-cut number one guy i think wondell robinson has showed some glimpses this season that he could be the future slot wide receiver for us i think the rookie jalen hyatt has game breaking speed could stretch the field and be a dangerous weapon for us he's got big shoes to fill though my god and then for the four star development wide receivers above them i think isaiah hodgins ends up being my favorite one he at least is still young 24 years old star development 75 overall shout out to the beavers so for clear developmental purposes i'm gonna make wandell our number one isaiah hodgins our number two and jalen hyatt our number three now of course at the tight end position we got newly acquired darren waller who got a good chunk of change in the offseason right and i'll be the first to say that i thought darren waller was gonna be really good on the giants after seeing what they did last year his last two seasons in vegas were just a little under Wyoming, and he was hindered by a lot of injuries as well but i mean these two seasons darren waller do we remember how good he was he was special but being past the age of 30 now means it could just simply be father time stepping in. And I feel like this offensive line has always been terrible, right? You chose Evan Neal extremely high in the draft, and he has had a very rough start to his NFL life. He has not been good. Left tackle, Andrew Thomas is really good. I think a franchise left tackle, one of the best in the league, but he's been hurt this season. And your left guard literally is straight off the couch. Now, defensively, they've always been a stingy side, and I think you got some good building blocks to build around. Of course, the main one being Dexter Lawrence. Sexy Dexy is one of the best at his position, if not the best, to be honest with you i think he has the most pressures by far for a defensive tackle i think against the jets actually he had like literally a million <laughs> so no doubt in my mind we'll keep him around and hopefully he can reach one of the highest peaks we've ever seen i'm not going nowhere another clear building block i see is of course Kayvon thibodeau and i was a huge fan of Kayvon coming out of oregon i thought he could have been the number one overall pick in that draft class and now in your number two i think he's one of the leaders for sacks in the entire league so he's starting to find his feet which is super exciting news for giants fans and hopefully today in this 10 year rebuild but we can develop him into one of the league's best pass rushers. So I think it's clear that it's him and Dexter Lawrence, of course, that are going to be the two main guys to build around. But there's more studs to this side of the ball as well. One of them being Bobby Okereke. And is it Okereke or Okariki? Because I always used to say Okariki, but all I hear now is Okereke. <laughs> Bobby was a sneaky good signing in the offseason. He's been playing exceptionally well for them at linebacker. They, of course, got former top 10 pick Isaiah Simmons for a literal bag of chips. Coming out of the draft, he was a super exciting prospect, very versatile and a good chess piece on the defensive side 
side of the ball as well can move back to strong safety if you want unfortunately just never really worked out for him on the Cardinals so I kind of like the Giants taking a gamble with this one and how has he been Giants fans because I don't really know I haven't heard too much about him has he been a hit a miss or a meh I think Xavier McKinney can be a really good overhang defender for us. And of course, at cornerback, you got Deontay Banks, who the Giants took in the first round last year. And no, it wasn't the sexiest pick at the time, nor has he set the league on fire. But I believe, especially in a 10-year reboot, that we can develop him today and hopefully he can be the CB1 for the Big Blue. Some other players I like as well, shout out Bobby McCain, former Miami Dolphin, but I'm going to play Jason Pinnock ahead of him because I just kind of want to move in a younger direction. And the same applies here for Boogie Basham, who isn't old himself, but I'm going to be starting Aziz Ojolari, of course, for that start development, for that upside. He's been hurt a lot in real life. I think he's still currently on IR as well, but hopefully today him and Kayvon can become something special. And also, I would just like to say, Graham Gano. Welcome to the XFL. I guess you could say Field Gano Good. <laughs> Now we are of course at midseason with all the realistic records. We got a realistic draft class thanks to Bengal, but all those things do not change the fact that this team sucks. And something I forgot to do, probably because I didn't want to do it, Tommy DeVito is going to be QB1. So the second half of this season will probably not be good at all, but it should ensure us a top top pick in the draft and hopefully we can get a franchise player. But before that, we do have some players I'd like to re-sign. One of them of course being Saquon Barkley, and like I said, I do want him to stick around. I'm going to give him a four year deal. He's going to be one of the best, if not the best running backs for us in in this video Xavier McKinney and Isaiah Simmons I would like them both back and hopefully it is going to be possible for us I'll bump up McKinney's deal a little bit and he is back for the big blue and Isaiah Simmons isn't asking for the most money but does he want to be here no nope. but he is still young I'll bump it up just a tiny bit to see what he says Looks like we're not going to get him back. Of course, we are the ones that traded for him. He has all the leverage. Adoree Jackson does want to rejoin us. I think a two-year deal would be more than fair. He doesn't, though. And then Isaiah Hodgins, Paris Campbell, Sterling Shepard, Darnay Holmes. I'll see you at the end of the year. And no surprise here, we finished bottom of the NFC East. I guess a little surprising, though. We ended up actually with five wins somehow. We ended up beating the Eagles in Week 18, 21-14. And if I'm not mistaken, a few years back, these two teams matched up on the final game as well. And I'm pretty sure the Eagles tanked that game to get a higher draft pick. All my homies hate the Eagles. Uh, brace yourself for these stats. Danny Dimes, Tommy DeVito, they were not diming. Matter of fact, they were climbing up the leaderboards for interception. Saquon was awesome, though. 1,466 yards, 4.6 a carry, 9 touchdowns for him as well. Isaiah Hodgins had a decent year with 788 yards, 5 touchdowns for him and Darren Waller as he gets 550 yards. Paris Campbell, Wandell. It wasn't Jalen Hyatt, my wide receiver three. Probably because I never changed the specialist section. Tackle leaders was Bobby, of course. Tackle for losses. Sexy Dexy leads away with 18. 16 for Kayvon. 15 for Ashawn Robinson. Sack numbers aren't the prettiest. Sexy Dexy leads away six and a half. Beggy Basham with six there. And Kayvon with five and a half. Yeah, Z's got zero. Yeah, the specialist section messed me up, actually. I totally forgot. <laughs> um, Verts, Voltster, Spieler, East, Patrick Mahomes. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll save you some time. We had nobody. We can go check some development traits, though. Or I can save you some time again. We got no... Oh, we actually did get one. Jason Pinnock went up to the star. <laughs> and the Cowboys are victorious in the bowl against the Ravens. They're 28-21. MVP goes to Dak. Isaiah Simmons, I do think I'm going to let walk. It's just a little too pricey for us. Adori still has interest. And he declined a two-year deal last time. How about I bump up the money just a tad bit? All right. I didn't want you anyway. And then the trio of Hodgins, Campbell, and Sterling Shepard. Honestly, I'm going to let them go too. Off-season time, we have about 55 mil. We need just about everything. Josh Allen is here, wants to join us. Green interest there would be a marquee signing. And honestly, after him, it kind of falls off. Shout out to Leonard Williams, who we just traded away. I need the Seahawks second. Hold on. I totally forgot about that. That's a pretty big asset as well, you know. I guess we could also check out where we finished. Number five overall pick. That week 18 win against the Eagles, dude. God. <laughs> I was hoping it would just be a tad bit higher, you know? Okay, the Seahawks number two or round two overall pick is going to be 48. But how does one actually get this pick? <laughs> I'm going to have to cheese the system a little bit here. Just made Deion Jackson literally cracked. Who? Oh! And Seahawks, give me that second round pick. Number 48, baby. And for Deion Jackson, sadly, I made him look like he's playing for the Guangdong Tigers. Ooh, they added Rashid Shahid's picture now. That's a nice touch. Come back home, Odell. I am here once again to ask why Dalvin Cook is still an X Factor. The only thing this guy is cooking is this. We do need a new left guard. Damian Lewis would not be a bad shout. We're just taking all of the Seahawks' belongings. Now, I'm just looking at some contracts here because I do want to sign Josh Allen in free agency. It's going to take a lot of money, though, and some of the contracts that we have here are just crazy, especially this one. Sexy Dexy, Andrew Thomas, Saquon, I think those are all worth 
forth that Okariki is getting a bit, but I think Okariki is really good, so that's fine. Xavier McKinney, we just played. But Waller here, Gano's even on a, like a long-term deal. Nunez, Rochez Sr. is even getting a bit, but I don't care. It is a 10-year rebuild, so I do have to be careful about some of these long-term contracts. But Josh Allen, alongside Kevin Altebido for the next four to five years, is game-changing. Oh, God. Oh, my God. And we are currently the top offer. So we, of course, got him, Damian Lewis, David Long Jr. on a two-year contract, Epinesa, as well as Rasheem Green to just round out some of that pass rush a little bit here. Let's go ahead and eval, and we will be getting Josh Allen, David Long, Epinesa, and Rasheem Green. Let's go. Who did I not get, though? Damian Lewis. Dang. Is there another left guard I'll actually do with just anybody? Isaiah win wins two years. I'm going to lower it to one, and we win his heart. Now, for private workouts, I made it pretty clear earlier that I would like to move on from Daniel Jones, so... You know what that means. I both want and need Caleb Williams in a New York Giants uniform, and we're going to change those tiers of sadness to happiness. So he's, of course, our first one. Now, I'm not too sure he falls to me to the second round, but Braylon Trice here out of UW would be an amazing addition to our D-line. And our third and final one's going to go on cornerback Denzel Burke out of Ohio State. I can't tell you much about him but his attributes look good. <laughs> and the official mock draft number five is Caleb Williams going number one, of course, to the Rams. We are pick number five. They have us getting Drake May. And although I do really like Drake May as a prospect and think he can even get shouts of QB1 in this class, I have done a video with him already, which funnily enough was my last 10 year rebuild with the Minnesota Vikings with Drake May. Of course, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And it's definitely not crazy to think maybe the Rams have Drake May higher on the draft board and they would like to trade all the way down to five with how this draft board is looking so far, gather some value for future years as well. They need a lot of pieces on that team after trading away so many picks in the past years i think the top two quarterbacks are a lot closer than what people may think i think caleb is definitely the more freakish prospect right he's got all the athleticism in the world he can make all the crazy plays and he's definitely got a super high ceiling but Drake May in structure is really good and has a rocket of an arm. It kind of reminds me of last year a little bit where Bryce Young was clearly the guy that was going to go number one overall and everybody was in love with him as a prospect. Yet the guy that goes right after him at number two, yes, maybe isn't as flashy, but I think we can all agree CJ Stroud is a baller. And I don't even really know where I'm going with this because I'm going to take Caleb Williams anyway at the end of the day. And we're going to see that super high ceiling be fulfilled in New York or New Jersey, whatever that. Before we trade up, would anybody like Daniel Jones? Guess not. Rams, what would you like for number one here? They would want pick 537 and then two future first rounders, as well as my other second as well, and third. Oh my god. That may be a little too much for my liking. I'll do five and 48. I will do a 2025 first. Crap. I cannot give them any players because they don't have any money. I'm going to try to give up a 2025 third and maybe a 2026 second. And now before I accept this trade, it's most likely going to get accepted, right? And I could probably even do it for less. But to move up to number one in this draft class to get Caleb Williams at one is going to take an absolute package. So... That is why I'm going to do this. Okay, never mind. <laughs> really, I thought that was going to be accepted for sure. Can I give you can I give you my third rounder this year then? Is that good enough? I just said all that for no reason. <laughs> 2025 second. Oh my god. Okay. It just might have to be three first rounders then. I'm willing to do it honestly cuz I think Caleb Williams can be that special. I'm going to go little by little though because I do not want to overpay 48. We're getting there. If I could give them like Darren Waller or something else, that would make this so much easier, but they just don't have money. All right, Rams, I'm starting to get a little sick of you now. Can you just accept the trade? Thank you very much. We just traded all that. The next three years, we will have minimal draft picks. However, what we do have is going to be a franchise quarterback. Let's go ahead and start the 2023 NFL draft. We are here at pick number one. Now, what could we get if we traded out of this pick? Huh? I'm just joshing around. If I'm not mistaken, we did manage to keep our second round pick at number five. And we actually have all our picks this year. So we got to we gotta get some talent here ASAP. And let's start with none other than, of course, Caleb Williams. He's got the arm. He's got all the athleticism. Like I said, he's going to make so many special plays here. And for all 10 years of this video... We're going to have him win a Super Bowl, some Super Bowl MVPs, hopefully, an MVP. He's going to win every single award possible at the Big Blue. Caleb Williams, you are a New York Giant. Of course, hidden development with 94 throw power there, 88 in acceleration, change of direction, and then 86 agility and speed. Just 21 years old out of USC. This is going to be special. And we're at pick five now with the Rams. They go ahead and choose... Drake May, the guy they had higher on their draft board, and these two are going to get compared for years to come. It's going to be a good rivalry. Now, in round two, what do I do? Braylon Trice did not fall to us, but tell you what, I'm going to take one of my guys here. Out of Oregon, of course, Sko Ducks. Troy Franklin is a beast. I can see him rising up the draft board as the day goes on every game he plays. He's a monster at the wide receiver position, and like I said, this team really doesn't have a one. Do I think he can be a one? 
I think there's some upside. I think he has a better chance to be the one than all the guys we have right now. We need to give Caleb Williams some weapons ASAP. Troy Franklin is my pick here in round two. He ends up being hidden development as well, which is awesome. And the athletic ratings are great as well with 93 acceleration, 94 jumping, as well as 94 speed. Being 6'3", he is going to be a big, big target for Caleb Williams. And now into round three. I'm hoping Denzel Burke is still there. He just isn't. Dang. All right, well, somebody just came to my house, and I totally forgot to pause the draft, so I have no idea who we went in the third round. But I guess I'll choose somebody here in round four. John Taylor, the defensive tackle out of Auburn here, is going to be my pick in round four. Going to be a good piece for us, no less. And draft recap time, Caleb Williams is a 79 overall. And let me also change his avatar real quick. Can I see which one I'm choosing? No? <laughs> I'm going to have to scroll through all of them until I find the one that looks close to him. <laughs> Nah, man, what is this game? Because there is one that's like similar to him, and you know which one I'm talking about. Bro, there's so many, too. I gotta like kind of luck out. Ooh. Okay, I think this one isn't too bad. We kind of looked at 146 here. Let's also make him number one because one is so tough. But let's check out his stats here. He's got 85 deep right out the gate, 86 short, 84 medium accuracy already. Awareness a little low, but throw on run. Look at that, 91. And we all know it. Caleb Williams is like one of the best improvisers we've ever seen in college football. Troy Franklin actually ends up being a 75 huh what 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 why is that his avatar why is this game so it's nothing that's not the same person <laughs> i know it doesn't really matter at the end of the day but these things bother me oh no let's go with head 60 i think that's close enough 75 is a bit high i cannot lie but knowing that now he might come in and be our wide receiver one immediately and in the third round the cpu drafted me dominique mcgee out of ucla here is a strong safety only normal dev and then john taylor ends up being a 72 as well and per usual we won't check out the rest of the class so we don't spoil it for future rebuilds here in year number two now we got some things to do. It's a new year. Does anybody want Daniel Jones? There are some suitors, you know, Falcons, Jets, Bears, Bucks. And the Falcons is the perfect team. I think I'm not going to do this trade, but they have Arthur Smith. You remember what happened in Tennessee when they got Ryan Tannehill after his failed stint at um, in Miami, of course. I see Daniel Jones kind of in a similar way here. I just don't think it's ever going to work out on the Giants with him. But I think Arthur Smith could rock his world. And vice versa, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because in my opinion, DoorDash Desmond is not that guy. We could give him some other pieces too, Aziz or Boogie Basham with Josh Allen now here. I don't need the both of them. And remember, we do not have picks for the next few years, so I'm just going to simply ask for a second, and it's very close. I could throw in an Aziz Ojalari as well, and then maybe ask for like a future third round pick. Maybe that sweetens it up a little bit. They do, or they are in need for another edge rusher, so they are both going to Atlanta. Daniel Jones and Aziz Dojalari, thank you for your time here. But we're getting that second and third round pick. I'll take that all day. And sadly, it seems like nobody wants Darius Slade. And it's going to be to the Colts here for a 2027 third round pick. And I think that's all we're going to be doing for now. We got a new QB under center. Saquon and Stewart Troy Franklin is immediately the wide receiver one with Jalen Hyatt and Wanda Robinson behind him. Darren Waller is still going strong. And the O-line is improving. Defensively, though, is where we made some big additions. Rasheem Green, AJ Epinesa are nice additions to the defensive line, as well as John Taylor in the draft but of course the marquee signing of the offseason was josh allen the best player in the free agency pool decided to come to east rutherford and i guess we can do a little bit of training camp especially with the new rookies we got caleb show me something and what did you expect me to get a dev trait never jalen hyatt's deep speed is different caleb with a bomb we're gonna be seeing a lot of that in this rebuild please go up and start okay Bro, this drill is the easiest one, but it always finds a way to piss me off. Like, I'm spamming Y there. Oh my god, what am I doing? What am I doing? What? No, I didn't get any dev upgrades. Okay, not gonna lie. Kayvon Thibodeau has a training camp standout. Go ahead and get plus five play rec for him. And he's in for another game here to continue his breakout against the Ravens in week one. I think he needs two sacks or TFLs. We actually win 28-20, yet Kayvon didn't get it. In that midseason, Caleb Williams in his first ever season, we are five and two. The NFC East, however, is a dogfight. We can, of course, go check him and Troy Franklin's development treat. Caleb Williams is a superstar X Factor. I thought it could have been that, but for the slight chance it was superstar, I did play that training camp to try to get him up. And I was so going to show you guys his first game against the Ravens, but I totally forgot. He has 12 tutties so far, six interceptions, 1,400 yards. And against the Ravens, he was okay. No touchdowns, no picks either, though. We actually, look at this start of the schedule. Ravens, Bengals, Cowboys. Lose to the Cowboys there, but against the Steelers defense, we put up 42. He has three touchdowns, zero interceptions. We put up 41 on the Commanders as well. He's starting to cook already. Okay, so we got Pinnock here, Isaiah Wynn, 
Boogie Basham, we also, I just saw, have negative 1.9 mil. <laughs> so I'm probably going to postpone that for another day. Bears in week eight, we win 28-14, but look at what we got next up. The 5-2 and two Philadelphia Eagles. This game means second second in the division, and we, we lost 24. 21. Week 10 against the 7-1 and one Cowboys, I believe that was, and we bring it to them. 29-15. What, what does this even mean? <laughs> he is already X-Factor, so he can't go up a dev tree, but I guess we can get some XP. Be great, dot, 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 again. Huh? <laughs> and against the Cowboys, Caleb Williams gets player of the week in the NFC as well. 25 for 31, 326 yards, three passing touchdowns. So Patrick Mahomes wins it in the AFC and Patrick Mahomes Jr. in the NFC. We actually have a tandem breakout and a trench boost and a pro we have so many messages. We got a sacks challenge against the Bucks. What do you mean by that? Okay, right off the bat, he is number two in the class though, and we seem to actually don't even have our first. <laughs> but our focus position is corner, and there are some dang good ones. Oh my. Stefan Sally out of the U here. If we can get our hands on him, I will. Darren Waller isn't the youngest, so I'm gonna put the second one on Derek Baker here, tight end out of the Homeschooled. Thanks, Bob. And then I think we're gonna need a left guard with wind walking. Spencer Connor, you are him. Guess we'll go ahead and sim this game against the Buccaneers, and we put up 42 points and get another win, and we get another weekly award winner, and it's Caleb Williams again, and he completed his breakout to go up to XX Factor. 24 for 29, 334, four passing touchdowns, no picks. He has come in, and he has been as advertised. Oh my god, we're actually cooking. What in the world? Back to back games without allowing a sack so the old line's turning up as well hey and because of that they all just earned 10,000 xp how much xp does he get 15,000 oh my this offense is cooking oh my god he has four skill points i mean his accuracy is already nuts throw power is already elite throw and run as well we need to get that awareness up play action under pressure and break sack i think let's do half and half with improviser and field general plus one break sack throw on run and plus two under pressure and the second improviser gives us plus three awareness throw accuracy deep and another ability Slot, hey? You know what? Let's put all four on improviser. Acceleration, short, under pressure, plus one, accuracy, D plus two. And final one, we'll do fuel general in hopes of getting some awareness if we get three of it. And Caleb Williams so far, 21 years old, already up to an 88 with plus two morale. And 12 weeks in has led us to an eight and three record already. We end up making the playoffs in Caleb Williams' rookie season, finishing 12 and five, second in the division. We got another weekly award. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't so. The third one we've seen. Shout out to Bobby as well. Nah, man, how many player of the weeks did he just end up with? We were number one offensively defense. Oh, <laughs> we went from almost first to last Caleb Williams in year one. 4,000 yards, 39 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 68% completion rate. Leads us to the playoffs with a 12 and 5 record. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. And it wasn't just Caleb. Saquon is still here as well. Remember, we gave him that new long-term contract. He almost put up 1,800 yards. He had six a carry, and he had 16 touchdowns. And Troy Franklin, eight as well, establishing some chemistry already with Caleb Williams. 10 touchdowns, 1,050 yards is our leading receiver. Wandell in the slot had a good year. Jalen Hyatt, 800 yards there. Saquon, even with eight touchdowns and 600 yards through the air. Darren Waller was not that good. <laughs> Your reigning defensive player of the week leads away for tackles. Made 16 TFLs for Dexter, 13 for Kayvon. Josh Allen with 12, and he leads away for sacks there with 10 seven and a half for sexy dexy cave on only five and a half a little underwhelming we might have to change the schemes up over there and here we are in the wild card round and i think for the first playoff game of my rebuilds i'm gonna start to hop in just to see what the team's cooking with see how we do very early on we got the lions by the way they have an 85 overall squad so one more than us and we're also going to be away here because it looks like they won their division so let's get it going should be a good game here let's see our very first playoff game with rookie quarterback as well can caleb williams step up it is 10 to 7 here in the middle of the second quarter defense kind of letting us down here giving up 17 points very early on second half it's on its way and it's 24 7 we do respond with the touchdown as well as the fourth quarter is now halfway through the lines are driving down and i mean we just could not get a stop doesn't look like we're gonna go anywhere tough first playoff game we turn it over on downs there it looks like and we lose 14 to 30 to dan campbell well we hopped in there wasn't really anything to watch there but of course it's still young we're in year two here out of 10 seasons we have a rookie quarterback things are looking bright Brittany mahomes husband wins mvp again but i see number five is k love williams already Number eight was Saquon. Oh. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Saquon Barkley. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Donald. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Is it even a question? And Troy Franklin, number two. We get one and two. 
Dominic McGee? Nah, it goes to Law 2. And I'm crossing my fingers, and hopefully Troy Franklin can go up to Superstar Dev. He doesn't. Dang it, Caleb, why do you have to win Offensive Rookie of the Year and you're already X-Factor? He doesn't, even after a good season. Nothing on the offense there defensively. Could we get a few? I think Pinup, Okariki, and Josh Allen go up to Superstar there. Those are pretty big. Pinnock up to Superstar, you know, this guy's kind of cooking, I can't lie, back-to-back -back years with a Devi. And the Cowboys win another one here, 16-10 to 10 against the Chargers, Super Bowl MVP once again goes to Dak, their time's running up soon, we will be there. We got a fifth-year option for Kayvon and Evan Neal here, the both of them are accepted, and we got just about under 20 mil to spend, Pinnock going up to Superstar is kind of nice, he also isn't asking for the most, but we did get Dominic McGee in the draft last year, I say me, it was the CPU, so I think that's going to be his replacement, we're thin for money here, we gotta, we gotta be wise with what we do, and what I'm going to do, is go to free agency and see what we got cooking up over here. Joel Batonio would be an awesome addition at left guard. Wyatt Teller's also here. Amari Cooper, JOK, Shadobia Wuzia, Greg Newsome, and Joku. Everybody has interest here, you know? A part of me wants to splash out for either Batonio or Wyatt Teller, but another part of me is saying get a lockdown CB1. And that is what I'm going to do because he doesn't want the most money as well. We could easily um, draft an offensive lineman as well. Greg Newsome, you are the prize possession. And I'm also going to try to get Isaiah Wynn back on a one-year deal. After the eval, we didn't get Greg Newsome. He goes to the Rams. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, I was really hoping to get Greg Newsome, you know. Actually, wait, we did scout a lot of DBs in the draft, huh? Isaiah Wynn, thank you for not accepting because I'm going to withdraw. And now let's put all our eggs with Wyatt Teller. We we aren't even in the top five top offers. All right, we'll bump it up then. It's only two years. Okay, we kind of are there now. <laughs> I'm just going to eval and take my chances. Is he a giant? Oh my God, I'm folding. I'm missing on everybody. Why does nobody want to join us? We were so good last year. Is Isaiah Wynn still here? Okay, Isaiah Wynn's still here. <laughs> Come on back. Come on back. Did we win his heart again? Yes, we did. He's back home. Rasheem Green is also back, if you care. Private workouts, we should know more about that cornerback. He's a round one talent. You know what, I'm gonna put one on the guard again. The tight end, Derek Baker again. And last one, defensive tackle Malik Raymond looks really good. And our pick is all the way at 23. Ooh, we do have 23 and 27 though. Um, the tight end is, oof, okay. <laughs> the left guard is, that's an absolute gem right there. We are now at pick 23. We still got some good DBs here. This guy's around one to two. And you know what, let's go ahead and take him here out of Iowa, 22 years old, zone archetype 62189, be catching, press and zone physically. Ooh, pretty good. Good acceleration there. Decent jumping, good speed, but elite strength as well. 20 bench reps in the uh, in the combine, and he ends up being hit in development. Not bad at all. Good speed with 91 acceleration and speed. Change directions at 90. Ezekiel Keenan, welcome to the big blue. And I'm also glad you were a big blue. I'm not gonna lie, this defensive tackle, Mike Castle, looks insane. Elite speed, great acceleration, good strength there. Look at this, though. 22 years old, BACB. Around three to four projection, but we don't have a third round pick, so I'm not too sure if I can get him. Because at this pick, we definitely want Spencer Connor, the left guard that we fully scouted. We know he's around one. He's out of Notre Dame, which is a great offensive line school, and he's only 21. We're in desperate need of a position on the O line as well. I'm not gonna take the risk, and I'm just gonna take Spencer Connor here. He ends up being hit in development as well. Gonna slot him in right away, probably at right guard. Gonna trade my fourth round pick as well as a future one, and then a 2027 20, third to go up here um, for the Cardinals third round pick. I don't know what number it is. I, <laughs> why does it just show me there? Just wanna make sure we get this defensive tackle. He looks so good. I actually didn't even check where he was going, so there's a good chance he could be gone. Mike Castle is still available for us, though we traded up to get him out of U-Dub. Can he be another hit of dev? He is normal, unfortunately. 88 strength, 82 acceleration, 81 speed is nice. Dang, I was hoping he was something special though. I think he was in my Vikings rebuild. It was the third round and I got a defensive tackle that was X-Factor. I thought Mike Castle could have been another one right there. Draft recap and considering we didn't have a first, I think we had an awesome draft, all things considered. Ezekiel Keenan, 74 overall. Connor, 76 and hidden. Castle ends up being 74 as well. Unfortunately, it was just normal. Was this class anything special though? Did I miss out on anybody? A running back, don't care. Cornerback, this guy was a top five guy, don't really care. Stefan Sally, remember we put a private workout on this guy. He goes top of the second round there so just couldn't get him actually ends up only being normal i'm taking my guy all day and we got the choice to review either spencer connor or ezekiel keenan i'm gonna go with the cornerback because of course spencer connor is gonna be starting right away at right guard so we know we'll know what he is at midseason the corner this could potentially make him our cb1 if he's special 
Only a star. I'll make him our CB2, though. Why not? And after an amazing rookie season from Caleb Williams, we're looking to get back to the playoffs but get our first win there, if not even more. The team remains fairly the same. We got some good upgrades with Josh Allen and Bobby there. Unfortunately, though, I could not get Greg Newsome. I'm going to do one training camp here. It's going to be for Deontay Banks, and if I don't get a dev upgrade, I'm not doing any more. Ten-year reboot. If I was to do this for every single year, I'd be here for two weeks. We get gold first try. But can I see gold over here? We don't. We don't. Ooh. What? At midseason, we're two and four. Five bottom of the east um spencer right guard dude yep we did just beat the bears 41 to 6 hopefully we can get a little momentum from that focus position this year i want a tight end i'm so confused why are we doing so bad now we lose by three to the seahawks lose to the packers lose to the commanders get smoked by the eagles and lose 17 20 to the raiders maybe we cook something up here before the trade deadline but who's bottom the bears are really bad the saints the patriots do they have any weapons i want maybe and his name is chris olave and they want sexy Dexy. All right. Two first, second, two seconds, two. Th okay. Um, this is probably not possible then. <laughs> but I give you Wandell Robinson and next year's first round pick. All right. Never. What's going on in Tennessee? They're just bringing all the washed receivers. The Eagles drafted Xavier Worthy too. Are you kidding me? Maybe a guy like Drake London. We know he probably hates Arthur Smith because Arthur Smith is annoying. Just not giving up a first though, am I? And remember, we don't have our first this year, so like, I, we need to be good. Ooh, what are the odds we could try to get Devonte Adams away from? Free that man, Vegas. A first rounder for Rashad freaking Bateman? Huh? Yeah, I've had enough. We do got some contracts. Wandell is here. He doesn't want to rejoin us. Micah McFadden, AJ Epinesa, David Long Jr. Nothing too big. And we do have a lot of money, but to be honest, I don't really care about any of these players. <laughs> we might save them all for free agency. Week eight, though, we got the Vikings. Oh my God, what is going on this year? And now week nine, we got the... Oh my God. Wild card rematch against the Lions. We, we beat them this time, but not when it mattered. Tell me there's a good receiver somewhere. Terry Good looks good. Ooh, okay. Dom Clifford out of Florida here. Round one to two talent in round three to four projection. That's the gem we needed. Brandon Hart looks like a monster at linebacker. And you know what? I'm throwing the last one on a day three receiver, Andrew Herbert. In week 18, we... What in the... What happened? This I didn't change anything. We end up 14... Or what am I saying? No, no we didn't. We end up four and 13. <laughs> Bottom of the East. That is... Okay. Offensively, we were good once again here. Fifth in the league defensively. 13th. What? We just couldn't translate any of that into W's, I guess. Caleb Williams had less yardage last year. Still 4K, though. 29 touchdowns. Only 7 interceptions, though. His numbers went down a little bit for some reason. I'm not too sure why our weapons remain the same. Saquon was still an absolute monster with 1650, 5.8 carry, and 15 tuds. Like, this was the same group we had last year. Hyatt, Franklin, Wandell, um, Darren Waller as well. 9 touchdowns for Wandell and Franklin there. 6 for Hyatt. Nobody over a thousand though. A bit of a sophomore slump if you ask me. Bobby leads away for tackles made. 21 TFLs for Josh Allen. Sexy Dexy with 19. And then sack numbers 13 for Josh Allen. Only four for Dexter Lawrence. But only three and a half for Kayvon Thibodeau. We're going to have to change to a 4-3 next year because that is just, that's just not good. That's just not good. What a season for us and the Rams are laughing at our face. Oh, what a Super Bowl. I'm starting to get sick of this guy. Oh, hold up. Josh Allen actually wins Defensive Player of the Year. Okay. And Ezekiel Keenan wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. I was going to say, we will take that and just be happy with it. So at the very least, we should get those two dev upgrades, and those would be really nice. Offensively, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Nothing over here. Troy Franklin still remains the same. We need, we need to get a wide receiver one. As good as Troy is, he'd probably be better suited as a wide receiver two. Defensively, though... Ezekiel Keenan is up to superstar development. And then Josh Allen is our new superstar X Factor. I'm not really too sure what went wrong this season, though. Was Jason Pinnock our whole team or something? <laughs> it's all right, though. This offseason, we should have some money to play around with. Oh, deja vu as a Dolphins fan. We lose 24 to 8 to the Eagles. Super Bowl MVP Jalen Hurts got his revenge on Tua. And just checking out some contracts now. We save about 13 mil if we released Aaron Waller. Safe to say this experiment did not work out. We got a Deontay Banks fifth year that we're, of course, going to be accepting. Wondell, I'm probably just going to let walk. He really isn't developing. Micah McFadden's been all right, but I'm going to let him walk too. Epinesa can go. David Long Jr. can go. Yeah, we're not going to resign anybody here. Oh, maybe Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito. Huh? Straight to free agency. We got 90 mil to splash here. Give me something good. That is the number one receiver we could be needing. Can he change sides in New York? Demarcus Lawrence is here as well. 
Okay, we got some names at the least. Sadly, Garrett Wilson has no interest in joining us at all because we don't have a player mentor at that tag. Come on. It's yellow. The Titans are just running away with it. They got some mentor. They had all those wash dudes, remember? Oh, I just gave Garrett Wilson a very friendly player deal and we're still not the top. But we'll try it anyway. Hopefully he wants to come and play with Caleb Williams. Grady Jarrett is here. Doesn't look like we're going to get him. Actually, the Falcons are offering him a ton. Benjamin St. Juice, Micah McFadden, Rasheem Green. Let's go ahead and eval the first day. A lot of people are gone. Garrett Wilson's actually still here. Micah McFadden. We only get Rasheem Green. Again. <laughs> I don't even remember who else I had. And like I said, I gave him a very player-friendly deal. I mean, this is just so much. I'm going to bump it up to 10, and we're going to bump that up to 12. That is the last offer. It still isn't green. We're still not on the top there. That is crazy. Both are gone. We get Micah McFadden back on a cheaper deal than what he wanted. Garrett goes to the Titans. That's all because I didn't have a mentor, bro. Oh my God. In these future rebuilds, I'm going to make sure to sign a mentor every single off season. <laughs> I didn't even get St. Jude's. What the heck? We actually do need another corner. And I guess that's going to be Marco Wilson. Ooh, Dom Clifford has moved to a round one to two to round one, if I'm not mistaken. How does he look? He's 23 already out of Florida, a little bit older there. Ratings don't blow you out the water, but they're all pretty good. We found a gem last year at right guard, so I'm going to do another one here in Andrew Moreland. I'm not going to lie. This draft is kind of garbage, bro. <laughs> There's just nobody here. Like, I guess we'll do Terry good again. And then I'm going to do like this center because he looks really good. Let's start the drive. What pick are the Rams going to be? Number four. That's our pick. I, I don't have my second. Oh, no way. God, we gave up so much to go up in year one, didn't we? Do the Rams have both? They have 4, 13, and 36, and 45. Oh my god, I just smacked my mic. I'm sorry. Uh, that is just not good. We can check out what that receiver was. He's actually round one, but he's going round one to two. There's just no way I get him. Unless we trade up again. I'm going to go up to round two here. If he's there, I might try, because we actually do really need another receiver. He is still here. Trade accepted. He's going to be worth it. Trust me. We're giving away a 2028 20, first round pick to go up in the top of the second round here with the Broncos. Hopefully that pick is 32 by that time. But who knows after the year we just freaking had. We're actually the next pick. That I, I kept that close. That's also our pick right there too. I hate the Rams. I hate them. All right, let's go ahead and take Terry Good here in the second round out of North Carolina. 22 years old, 6'2 slot there. Rating wise, pretty solid all around. I'm just hoping I could see that blue question mark. And we do. So it should be nice. He should be your wide receiver too immediately there. Pretty good athletic ratings all around. Welcome to the squad. Now we do have number four and number 21 here. Is that left guard still there? He's gone. I don't know. Was it right guard? It was. And he's around one. Okay. Um, remember, we have the Titan as well. I think, yeah, let's just take both of them right now. Why not? Dom Clifford, we already saw everything he's about. Hopefully, he's hidden development. And he is. Okay, the offense is going to be back to what it once was. I mean, we were still top five last year, but you know what I mean. I, I should have, mm, maybe I should have traded up. That was a little longer than I expected. Please still be there. I will actually be so mad. I will actually be so mad. Oh my God. Why didn't I just trade up? I don't know why I thought my pick was like right after mine. I don't know. 15 seconds to go. I'm just going to take this center. We unfortunately missed out on that guard. However, this guy may have been a blessing in disguise. Blue question mark. I don't know why I keep saying blue question mark. Hidden development though. Welcome to the squad. We can move him around. Okay. I'm in the fifth round. Look at this punter. Great elite, 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 elite. Number one in everything there in the combine. He's our new punter. He's our new punter. And he might just be generational. 96 kick power with i cannot see accuracy but he has 94 jumping too for no reason <laughs> now we might need you at receiver buddy he's gonna change the energy around here no doubt about it and the draft terry good ends up being a 76 that's really really nice clifford 75 barnett 73 and hidden the punter is 76 overall he's definitely generational and once again imagine we actually had our picks we could have had one of the craziest drafts of all time because we still did really good after all terry good was actually a top five talent it looks like because we have a few 77s here okay what a trade up for me and donaldson's up here too who is the i wanted that guard right that guard in like round three literally went in between my picks and here he goes he went 12 here he was the highest guy in the third round as well as dom clifford that would have been an awesome pick he ends up being hidden too dang it was just hoping he was normal he goes to the cardinals he's only a star okay that's fine because our guy's star as well wait i never i never took that that linebacker that i had oh no what was his name? It was this guy, Brendan Hart. He's 71 overall. Not, nothing too crazy. Is hidden though. Is hidden though. Luckily for me though, I did re-sign Micah McFadden in free agency. So it's okay. 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 I get it. I get it. You hate me. You hate me, Madden. Let's go ahead and reveal some. I have zero staff points. All right. Now, you're number four now. We got some changes. 
Goods here. Clifford's our new tight end. Hopefully these two young rookies can spark up something on the offense because something was missing last year and I'm not too sure what it was. Defensively, we've also changed to a 4-3 now with Kayvon and Josh Allen on the defensive line. Keenan has gone up to superstar dev, which is awesome and... Other than that, I think it remains the same. Terry Good's going to be in the slot again. Specialist, really nothing changed here either. Let's go to midseason. Hopefully, it's much better than what it was last year. I mean, we have an 88 overall offense, 85 defense, and an 86 overall squad. There's just no excuses for us to not be making the playoffs anymore. And it's not like we just have a good team and no quarterback, right? We have the quarterback. He's like 94, 95 overall. The defense is good. Offense is good. We just got a generational punter. Surely, something's got to give here. And we're 4-2. and two which is all right. I, I think a, a part of it, though, is this division is just so tough. Like, every team is just going to be so close to each other, right? Okay, okay. Well, Terry Good's only a star, however. Dom Clifford is a superstar X-Factor tight end that we got in the second round, I believe it was. Holy crap, that is what we needed. I'm going to change his face also. Actually, wait, yeah, I forgot about this, though. <laughs> I wanted to find, like, one of the new faces, but I, I, I can't tell. I think this one might be new <laughs> no it's the same old boring one but whatever I mean, it's too late now dom clifford has just had a a crazy change at the end the mid-season mark <laughs> okay we do have 125 mil in the cap room cave here okariki evan neal smiths jr jalen hyatt a lot of people on the first team cave we for sure want to bring back for a long time although he has been a little underwhelming in this rebuild so far has not gotten us many sacks at all but we're still hoping he can grow into something. Bobby, 30 years old now, probably not going to re-sign him. Evan Neal has little interest in re-signing here as well. And honestly, I don't want him either. <laughs> Schmitz is 27 now, doesn't want to rejoin, but we could just draft a center. Matter of fact, I did draft a center, his replacement already in Hyatt. I'm just going to wait till the end of the year. And we end up finishing first in the East, 12 and 5. We're here in the wild card round, the Cowboys, 9 and 8. But like I said, 9 and 8 isn't even a terrible record, and they're bottom of this division. We were, what, 4 and 2 at the midseason. We lost to the Cowboys in week 8, and look at this win streak we went on. Cardinals, Colts, Browns, Jags, Eagles, Commanders, Texans. Two losses at the end of the year. The Cowboys actually swept us, despite only going 9 and 8 there. Offensively, we're back second in the league this year, but did the defensive change make a big one? 15th which is actually down from last year <laughs> i don't understand 4400 yards for caleb williams 39 touchdowns seven interceptions only as well as a 71 percent completion rate mvp type year saquon once again great and i'm getting a little scared now because saquon is getting to those last prime years especially as a running back you know 29 now he's still a 99 though but we're not gonna have him for much longer he gets 1500 yards 5.2 a carry 13 touchdowns as well jalen hyatt look at this year 3,000 yard receivers we needed terry good he has changed this offense around a thousand there for him 10 touchdowns 11 for Hyatt 9 for Troy Franklin Clifford in year one not bad at all for a tight end that's better than any year um Darren Waller had for us Okereke 123 tackles TFLs 19 for Sexy Dexy 18 for Kayvon 16 for Josh Allen and the sack numbers look nice as well 15 for him 12 and a half for Sexy Dexy Kayvon just cannot get over like seven for some reason which is quite disappointing Okereke five picks as well two for Marco and Keenan there what a season for us though we got the nine and eight Rams in the wild card on the team that we gave all our picks to this is drake may versus caleb williams as well we might have to hop in for drake may versus caleb williams i'm not gonna lie i didn't plan on doing it but the top two quarterbacks of the 2024 draft are going head to head here in the wild card round in metlife in east rutherford it's gonna be seven to three in the middle of the second quarter it's 14 10 now we equalize there with a quick touchdown and get one at the end of the first half to take the lead get another one 24 14 lead now our defense has found out drake may he is not going anywhere 21 31 Two minutes left, 34-21. We clinch the game. Caleb Williams is victorious against Drake May. We get our first playoff win of the video. Ooh, and Drake May had more yards. He had more touchdowns, but he also had two interceptions. Caleb didn't throw one. Two touchdowns for him, 260 yards. Oh, okay. It was it was really Saquon who had the team on his back. Two touchdowns, 8.6 a carry, 155 freaking yards. <laughs> Saquon is such a cheat code, bro. We got to get him a Lombardi right now. And in the divisional round, we got the Washington Commanders. They finished second in the division. Them and the Cowboys at a 10-7 and 7 record. We're not going to hop in for this one. I trust my guys to get the job done right and head us to the NFC Conference Championship. We got another NFC East battle here in the Philadelphia Eagles. Can we take them down? Get our trip to the Super Bowl for the first time in this video. They beat us. They beat us in the conference championship despite being a lower overall team and a worse record than us. But it's improvement. We made it. Th this is the farthest we've made it so far, so I can't really be too mad about that. We're showing good signs now. 
And oh my god, I think Patrick Mahomes has won every single MVP award in this video. Caleb finishes too. He got robbed. I'll say it right now. Terry Good is your offensive rookie of the year. He could go up to superstar. He definitely could. I see um, Dom Clifford at number four as well. Caleb, best QB. Come on now, we're here. This year marks the changing point of this video. We're going to be contenders for the rest of it. Especially now with a super for star terry good baby we still do not know what barnett is unfortunately but jalen hyatt also goes up to star as well so that's awesome to see defensively can we get any over here as well oh karake goes up to x factor i think mcfadden and whitley goes up to star i don't even know who whitley is i'm honest with you um yeah that's all the punter we what and the Eagles end up going all the way 31 17 hurts. I think again is Super Bowl MVP. I think every single Super Bowl in this video has been an NFC East. So with two to the Cowboys, two to the Eagles. I know who's got the next six. <laughs> we will be there next year. Caleb Williams, fifth year option. He's at 98 overall. Just led us to the conference championship, of course. Okay, okay, is up to X Factor now. He's 31 years old, though, wants a two year deal. Might just be too much for us. He also has no interest in joining us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump it up a tiny bit. He's been really good for us. I don't want to lose him, but we're most likely going to. Evan Neal is gonna walk. Same with Schmitz. Jalen Hyatt actually did have a pretty good year for us. Goes up to star as well, but we might be able to find somebody better in free agency, and we got the money to do it. And if I'm not mistaken, I think after the Super Bowl, we start to get our dev traits for the guys. Barnett's only a star. Donaldson though, Donaldson though, you already know. Free agent time, we have 140 mil. Tyreek Hill is here, but he also is 33 now. Ronnie Stanley, Kendall Fuller, it's just all these old players. Okereke, of course. Marvin Mims would be a pretty nice number two. I wouldn't mind getting Tyreek Hill on a cheap deal, but he has 19 other teams interested. <laughs> and while everybody's fighting for him, I'm gonna try to sneak by and get Marvin Mims. Kendall Fuller, we're gonna try to get on a one-year deal. Mims, Nicole Dean, we need another linebacker, and then Petit Freyer and Darno Washington just to be some backups for our squad. Contracts are revealed, they're all gone. Are they all here? Ooh, okay, we actually end up going five for five. Some huge additions to our squad. Bro, do I have my picks yet? We actually have our pick, and of course we were good this year. We don't have our third, but finally in the first round, and I, I also just remembered we don't have our pick next year. <laughs> we better be good again. However, we do have so much money. There is a world I'd trade him and just get a superstar marquee player, especially if I don't like anybody here. First one, Gilbert Spiller, awesome looking DT. We also badly missed out on a linebacker last season. Hugh Felton, I will not miss out on you. And Jacob McLeod, right guard. Pick 30 now, the defensive tackle is gone. And the other two guys we did are going way later. Actually, we do need a right tackle. Huh, I got Petit Freyer, but he's more of a short-term guy. Bang, okay, big trade alert. We're getting Paris Johnson Jr. to be our new right tackle, as well as Zayvon Collins, who's only 81, but is up to superstar X-Factor. Good giving away pick number 30 here. The, the first first-round pick we've had since Caleb Williams is getting traded as well as a 2029 third. And at 30 in the second round, we're going to take that linebacker. We saw Hugh Felton here, 21 years old, out of A&M. Ratings look really good. Great, solid, great, great, elite, and good. Welcome to the squad. And in development as well. Hopefully he's the same dev trade, if not better than the guy we missed out on last year. And Hugh Felwyn ends up being a 74 overall. Not bad. That was the only choice I made that draft. Anybody crazy in here, though, a safety that goes number three. Could have never got him. I saw this guy at defensive tackle as well. I just was not going up to 15 to grab him. I think this is now the best our team has ever looked. We have three X factors. Caleb is up to a 99. Saquon is going down a little bit now. And Dom Clifford, of course, is still here. We did pick up Marvin Mims, but I am think I'm going to make Terry good or wide receiver number two. He's superstar dev. He's one of our guys as well hopefully he can develop like that quicker he was a beast last year we got kendall fuller now zavin collins we also got in that big trade in the draft we got really close last year hopefully this year we can just get over that hump just a little bit here we go here we go at mid-season we are six and one contracts and sexy dexies now here josh allen zavin collins saquon barkley deontay banks troy franklin huge huge players Dexter Lawrence, I'm sorry, we haven't got a Lombardi yet, but I'm telling you, in the next two years, you sign this contract. Okay, never mind. Josh Allen is 30 years old now, but he's still a 93, still an X Factor, and does want to rejoin. Saquon, honestly, I think for another two years, it wouldn't hurt, honestly. He's still an X Factor, so he shouldn't regress as fast. As for Deontay Banks, can he go up to Superstar? Because he's actually been developing really nicely into an 87 overall now. He's back as well. And then, of course, Troy Franklin, who I'd love to keep around to. He's still just 23. And after that, we do got Xavier McKinney, Kendall Fuller, McGee. He is here, John Taylor, who we drafted a few years back, but I'm going to wait. Can we do what we did in the first half in the second half? Yes, we freaking can. 15 and 2. 
Are you kidding me? Why do we always... I swear every time I have a good record, I lose the first week. We lose to the Eagles there. Commanders, Patriots, 45-3. to Saints, Cowboys, Panthers, Chiefs, Vikings, Niners, Cowboys, Commanders, Falcons. That is the craziest win streak of all time. What is that? 11-10 game win streak there. We lose, we lose to the Bills in week 14 there. 21-28 away in Buffalo. Tough game. But then Eagles, Dolphins, Jets, Bucks to finish off the year. 15-2 bye week. This is our year. This is our freaking year. If we don't get it done this year, I don't know when we can. Offensive yardage is, of course, number one. Defensive yardage, also number one. Okay, here we go. Caleb Williams almost puts up 5K yards, 4,800 there. 41 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 73 completion rate with a 15-2 record. This is the MVP of the league. Saquon is showing no signs of regression, which is why we signed him back on another two-year deal. 1,500 yards, 5.5 a carry, 10 touchdowns. Receiving wise, and Troy Franklin has been unleashed. Oh my days. Almost 1,500 yards for him. 11 touchdowns. Terry Good, 13 touchdowns. He's becoming a great red zone threat for us, as well as almost 1,400 yards himself. Marvin Mims had a good year. Dom Clifford, I would like to see more of, but he did find the end zone eight times. And Micah McFadden and Zayvon Collins leads the way for tackles made. TFLs goes to Josh Allen. Dexter Lawrence with 15. Cave on Thibodeau, but look at the sack numbers. Three people in the double digits with Sexy Dexy leading the way with 15, 12 for Josh Allen, and 11 finally for Cave on Thibodeau. Shout out to Matt Castle as well. Mike, Mike Castle. I want. I said Matt Castle. <laughs> Interceptions, too, for Deontay Banks. The rest of the people with one. Deontay, please go up to Superstar. And in the divisional matchup, we got the 10-7 Giants. They have an 81 defense versus our 92 offense. We should be able to exploit that, right? Right? <laughs> we do. 42-7. And here we are again. Deja vu of last season. NFC Conference Championship against the divisional rivals, Philadelphia Eagles. They go 12-5. We're hopping in. We want to see us beat them. We need MetLife to be rocking today. We need him more than ever. Divisional matchup here. 7-3 to at the end of 14-3. to End of the first quarter, we get a quick touchdown at the end there. They equalize though. 10-14. We get another touchdown. 21 points in the first half, but the Eagles are not going away easily. 21-20. to 24-20 heading into the fourth quarter now. 27-20. 23. We score a touchdown there to Saquon Barkley. A 45-yard rushing touchdown. I guess we could just sim play by play now. The Eagles driving down slowly but surely, but Jalen Hurts gets sacked by Kayvon Thibodeau, the man that has finally showed up here in year five. Josh Allen with a sack on a third and 21, and the Eagles pass it away, but they convert the fourth down. Are you kidding me? On a fourth and what was that, 27? Xavier Worthy now driving them down. First and goal, they're on our one. You know what they're going to do when they're on the one. They tush push it in. 31-34 as they get the two-point conversion. Onside kick. We recover. They have three timeouts, though. All of it is gone. We end up punting the ball, though. And we need our defense to step up. All the storylines, all the limelight went to our offense this year, but our defense was just as good. Don't forget, Jalen Hurts rolls out and gives it to DeAndre Swift in the flat. No timeouts remaining. Talk or Time is going to keep ticking here. Second and 12. A loss of two yardage there. Can we get some pressure on Jalen Hurts here? Cave on. Josh Allen. Almost a pick by 33. Oh, that would have been huge. But it leaves us with a third and 12, of course, with no timeouts remaining. They got another down on the fourth down as well. Jalen Hurts is going to roll out to the right here. He has room to run. Doesn't want to. Just throws it away. That was very unlike Jalen Hurts, EA. <laughs> that was so dumb. But we will take those all day long. Fourth and 12 now. Game over. It comes down to this very drive. And Sexy Dexy gets pressure. Does he do his dance? Do your dance, Sexy Dex. Do your dance. You deserve it right now. Because with that pressure, gives us our first ticket to the Super Bowl in this video. Like I said, the run starts now, baby. The first few years, remember, it was the Cowboys. It was the Eagles. You can have your time. The second half of the year, it's us. It's us. And hopefully it remains us because it's not going to be the Commanders anytime soon. <laughs> Ooh, and in the Super Bowl, we got the 10-7 and 7 Houston Texans. Of course, CJ Stroud versus Caleb Williams is going to be a good one. And also, is he the MVP of the league? Joe, Bur how? We, we finished 15 and 2. Can I see the Bengals record? Absolutely ridiculous. We do win coach of the year, though. The dime ran out of time. Crazy we didn't win MVP, though. Honestly, best QB, Caleb. Ooh, Spencer Connor, number three for best O line. Debbie's here and Troy Franklin and Terry Good. The double T's should definitely go up a dev trade. They were sensational throughout that season. <laughs> Good was a superstar, right? Yeah, he goes up to X Factor. Okay, I totally forgot about that. And Franklin goes up to superstar. On the defensive side, we were number one over here as well. Deontay Banks still doesn't go up. Kayvon doesn't go up. That was his best season for us. 
Hugh Felton also was only a star too. Dang, number one defense and we didn't get one. That's a little underwhelming. I believe we're in year five now. Let's go ahead and check out this Texans roster. It should be different. CJ Stroud is somehow not a superstar dev. He hasn't gone up. He should be a superstar dev after whatever update. CJ Stroud is so good. Damian Pierce is still there. Tunsil. Will Anderson. They still got their squad. Bobby. Bobby changed sides. He went to the dark side. But hey, we got rid of him and we end up making it here as well. Maybe he was the problem over here. Derek Stingley. Who is this guy? Trevor Kramer. J Jalen Petrie still there. They drafted JC Latham in the 2024 draft. Odafe Owe. Stefan Sally. Remember this corner we were looking at in like year two, I believe. Okay, this should be a fun game, man. And remember, I believe the Texans were only 10-7 and 7 as well. So it looks like they caught some heat here at the end of the year, right when you need it. They get a quick touchdown right away in the first quarter and shut us out as well. However, we do have ball. We're on the 31 here. Hopefully, we can score soon. We get three points. Take three points. We get a safety. Get ball back. Get a field goal. Haven't scored a touchdown yet. It ends up being 8-10. Terrible scoreline to go into this first half. And um, nobody had correct scoreline for that. I can tell you that right now. Someone probably did. You know somebody did. 17-8 now in the third quarter. We have yet to score a touchdown. This is quite concerning. The Texans are kind of shutting us down. Negative two-yard rush there. Fourth and three. They're going to end us punting the ball. Can we drive down here when we need it most? Second and three now. We get the first down. We keep driving down. Just little chunks here and there. It doesn't need to be a big bomb, but little by little. First and 10. Five-yard penalty. Spencer Connor. What are you doing, my guy? Third and 12 now. On the 49 here. Even if we get little yardage, maybe four down territory, although it is still a one-possession game. We do trust our defense. Do we need to, though? We don't because Caleb Williams is that guy. I believe that's Dom Clifford, the superstar X-Factor tight end that we drafted. With a huge 30-yard gain, and I also just backed out and came back in, and we now switched sides because Madden is stupid. Saquon, it's a play action. That fooled me, too. Touchdown right away, right when we hop in, and it's Troy Franklin with the first touchdown for the New York Giants in this rebuild in the Super Bowl, that is. We're here now. We can take the lead. I believe we should go for two as well. Nope, never mind. Why wouldn't? Why would we not go for two? Actually, going for two is so useless. What am I talking about? <laughs> why, did, why didn't I sign freaking Mr. Harrison Bucker? Oh no, that's probably, I mean, we were still 15 and two, so who really cares here? Can our defense step up when we need them the most though? Because that moment is right now and the Texans got a fresh set of downs here on to the 49. Only a one point game with under six minutes to go. Damian Pierce goes absolutely nowhere. Second and 10, CJ Stroud in the gun play action to Damian Pierce. We get pressure immediately. He just gets rid of the ball. But it now gives us a third and 10. The defense has been clamping. The crowd is cheering as loud as they have been all night long. CJ Stroud, get down to the ground. And it's going to be our rookie. No, our not, our not our rookie. I think our second year guy, Hugh Felton. Actually, no, I think he is our rookie, right? This is our only pick this year. Comes through in the freaking Super Bowl with a sack on CJ Stroud on a third and 10 with five minutes to go. And we're up only up, we're only up one as well. Massive play. An absolute nail biter so far. First and 10. If we can drive down here, kill clock, potentially even get seven on the board. We would just about clinch this game. Can I call a tush push, please? Third and one. We need this first down. It will kill so much clock as well. We're handing it off to Saquon, who we just re-signed. That's a very generous spot. I did not think he had that at all. <laughs> what? Referees, I'll give you the money after the game. But for right now, let's not talk about it. Caleb's got time. When Caleb's got time, oh my God, I was going to say he makes a big play. Almost threw a pick. We need to run the ball, man. We need to run the ball. We need to kill as much clock as possible here. Instead, we're an empty. But at the end of the day, oh my God, Dom, what the hell? That's the worst thing that could have happened. At least if he would have caught it, clock would have kept ticking. The fact that he dropped that, I mean, he's just... Now we get sacked. And look who it is. Look who it is. You've got to be kidding me. The man that's been with us since the beginning of this video, he knows all our tricks. He knows what Caleb Williams can do, but he also knows his weak spots as well. And he exploded it there. We punt the ball back. We're only up one, dude. This is terrifying. But we do get a good punt from, of course, our superstar generational guy. How does he hold on to that, Nico Collins? Two minute warning is passed. On the 29, second and three, CJ Stroud drops back once again. It's Dalton Schultz. This, this, the, side, <laughs> the, the spots this game have been very generous to us because I don't know how that wasn't a first down, but ours was. If we get a stop here, it would be nice, but it also is four down territory more than likely. CJ Stroud drops back once again. And it's a pick, number 33. Is that, is that Keenan? Is that Ezekiel Keenan or corner that we drafted? It is. Huh? Oh my God, what, what's he doing? What's he doing the pose for? No, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? That is an interception all day. What's he pointing at? And it's the very first turnover from both teams throughout this entire game right here. 
A first down clinches the game here, would ice it away, feed Saquon as much as possible. Second and four. Who's that? It doesn't matter. It's a, as long as he doesn't fumble, it's a first down. I think we're good. Victory formation. We get our Super Bowl five years into this thing, but we don't want just one. We want two. We want three. We want four. We want five more. <laughs> Hopefully, that's going to be a tough ask, but we have Caleb Williams. We have this absolute juggernaut of a squad. And why are we not kneeling again? <laughs> Can you just imagine? Imagine. Just go down. Just go down. Actually, actually. Okay, now go down. Go down. Please don't fumble. <laughs> Should be good to go. Game is over. We win the Super Bowl. Finally, we've built a great squad. That was an absolute nail biter as well. 18-17. We only had one touchdown in that game, but it was the most important score of the entire game. Came through. Came through when we needed it most, offense and defense. Both quarterbacks didn't have amazing games, but Caleb Williams definitely was the better one. He had 80 more yards. They both had a touchdown, but CJ Stroud, not only did he have an interception, but it was the game-winning one as well. Saquon was fed 17 times and still had over 5.4 carry, 93 yards for him, no touchdowns on the ground. And it's Marvin Mims leading the way for receiving-wise, despite him being the quietest in the regular season when we need our best players. They show up. Troy Franklin got that touchdown as well. Darnell Washington, um, Terry. Terry didn't even have a catch. Dominic McGee leads the way for solo tackles made. TFLs, Mike Castle with two there. We got one from Felton McFadden, Kayvon Thibodeau, and then sack numbers went to Felton, Kayvon, um, Dexter Lawrence as well, and Keenan had a half a sack. He had that game-winning interception as well. He just might mess around and steal that Super Bowl MVP. Not steal, but you know what I mean. It rarely goes to the defense. Ends up going to Caleb Williams. He had a good game. Had the game-winning drive as well, so can't complain about that. That's our QB1, baby. What a Super Bowl, and here we go. Five-year streak still is alive of the NFC he's winning the Super Bowl. This is kind of crazy. But of course, that means the script next year. It should be us again, right? Right? <laughs> Ooh, and we got to bring people back. 130 mil. Dexter Lawrence is 30 now, but he's still 99. He's still an X Factor. I mean, 30 isn't even that old. We want him to be a giant for life in this whole video. He's back for two more years. Zayvon Collins is X Factor 29, though, and has no interest. I think I'm going to let him walk, even though he did do his thing. Actually, I'm, I might lose both players in the trade here. Paris Johnson does not want to rejoin us back as well. I'm going to bump up the deal a lot. We definitely want him to be our guy, and he stays as our right tackle. I couldn't lose both the players I traded for. Micah McFadden's here again. Doesn't want to rejoin us, though. McKinney is 30 now. Probably going to have to let him walk, as well as Kendall Fuller. McGee and John Taylor just don't have any interest. Marco Wilson, we're going to let walk as well. All right, we're going to keep our core around, but we definitely got to refresh a few positions as well. Why did Donaldson take that kick? <laughs> Bucker's just sitting on the bench doing nothing. And over in free agency, we got Josh Sweat. We got Justin Tucker. I might sign Justin Tucker. I've never actually seen him here. And Harrison Bucker is a fraud. You know what, JT, the best kicker of all time, get on my squad. Michael Penix is here. I just watched him and Caleb Williams absolutely duel out in that game of UW versus USC. Every eval is gone, but Justin Tucker, for some reason... We only get Tyre Hart or Tyre Tart and Zach Harrison. I did go in for James Daniels and Xavier McKinney to get him back, but he goes to Minnesota. And it looks like we got everybody. Petite Freyer is back. Willie Gay is here. Brian Cook now. And Justin Tucker is a giant. <laughs> Come ring chase, baby. Come ring chase. All I had to do in the selling point was show them the script. And in round two with Saquon getting a little bit older now, I think we got to start looking for his replacement right now. Dante Laws might be the guy. Extremely fast with the elite acceleration. Good speed there. He's a solid athlete overall and looks like the best player available out of Texas as well. Maybe the next B. John Robinson ends up being hidden dev as well for life after Saquon. Hopefully we're sorted. Um, This corner is projected undrafted. A catching, A press, B zone 22. Man is uh, B to D as well. Physically, maybe nothing the craziest. Elite jumping is quite nice though. It's projected undrafted and with attributes this good. This is an absolute gem here. Even in the third round, we find a hidden development cornerback who was projected to go undrafted. That is crazy value. And even after winning the Super Bowl, we get a good draft as well. Dante Laws is a 75 overall. And Ralph Beverly, only a 69. Nice. But it's going to be a good developmental piece as a CB4 here. I ain't mad about that. Quick overview of the class. Anybody crazy? Right guard in the second round. A ride receiver in the fifth round is the second highest guy in the class. Only normal though. QB went number one. Pretty regular looking class though. And to reveal, it's either Dante Laws or Ralph Beverly. Beverly, of course. Oh, actually, we got two. Oh, the CPU actually got me two. Trent Woodward, great Gabriel Graham as well. I'm going to do the running back Dante Laws because, yes, we signed Saquon to a new deal. But as those years go on, this guy might be the guy to take over. He's a superstar dev. Okay, that is not too bad. He is only 5'8", but 215 there. 92 speed, 94 acceleration, 87 carrying, 89 agility. He's pretty well-rounded running back as well. And now heading into year six after a Super Bowl. I mean, the offense is on fire. Caleb Williams, 99. We have four X-Factors on this offense. The offensive line remains intact as well. 
Let's actually make laws our RB2. And defensively, we made a few additions like Tyre Tart, but we did lose some people as well. We're actually really thin at strong safety. Is there anybody I could trade for easily? And the Texans, who we just played in the Super Off Kramer, they have Cam Kitchens, and they just drafted Alani Higgins as well. Even Chuck Lambert isn't too bad. Considering they just traded this guy and got Kramer, I'm gonna try to get Cam Kitchens. Why not? That would be a huge upgrade on our team. John, he's a running back. That's our third string running back now that we have Dante Law. Yeah, absolutely. Hello. We not only just beat them in the Super Bowl, but now we take Cam Kitchens away from them. An 84 overall star, strong safety, of course, out of the U. Now we are a little thin at corner. Ralph Beverly is going to be our CB3. He's only 69 overall. And then this Woodard guy, 66. And Graham seems to be a 61 overall linebacker. I mean, a 90 overall team, though. 93 offense, 87 defense. We're off a Super Bowl. Let's get another one. We're going straight to the playoffs. I got full huh? confidence in our squad. And we... We, we got a bye week i don't know we do we go 14 and 3 dude that was scary i thought there was a i thought there was a slim chance we may have missed the playoffs you never know with madden bro offensively this year we were number four in the league and defensively 10 so that fell down a bit wow what a season for caleb williams 4346 yards 33 touchdowns a little bit lower than last year but one interception is actually crazy i don't think i've ever seen an interception total that low saquon still really good but he is getting a little bit older now and we can start to see it only four and a half a carry only 1300 yards only it's still elite numbers but compared to what he was doing of course it isn't 14 touchdowns still as well dante laws three tutties so let's go receiving wise in the duel between terry good and troy franklin the double t's have been awesome together both over 1100 yards there 12 tutties for good eight for franklin mims had a decent season and tom or dom clifford had an okay year we'd love to get him more involved but the offense is just clicking i don't really want to change anything take your tart actually leads the way for tacos made it the, the new addition 16 for him sexy dexy 15 14 for josh allen 12 for Thibodeau there and josh allen gets 17 and a half sacks i think that's the most we've seen 12 for Thibodeau as well he's really come alive sexy dexy with nine that's what i'm talking about two interceptions for willie gain deontay banks there one for carmen and the rest nobody or the rest we had none you know what i meant and in the divisional we got the vikings again i believe we played them last year right and we bullied that 81 defense they have with our 95 offense i'm expecting 52 points what we just we, we we just lost <laughs> obviously we just lost though like actually quinn ewers quinn ewers is there 230 three touchdowns zero picks he outplayed caleb williams fair play what in the world oh my god saquon was horror 2.7 to carry with 17 attempts marvin mims jetta is still going strong troy franklin what a disappointment in a game where josh allen had three sacks as well one tackle for loss offense let us down that game i'll say it seems like they watched their film they saw what they did wrong last year they were out for vengeance that is very disappointing though and the script the script was wrong the script was wrong <laughs> and this time jalen hurts wins mvp how do you win mvp bro honestly I, we last year we went 15 and 2 this year we were the number one seed again caleb williams had 33 to 1 like uh, well, what do i have to do like i swear i've barely won the mvp award this year i just want to see the stats and see what jalen hurts put up that made him so much better than us 4200 yards 34 touchdowns four picks we literally had more yards we had one less touchdown we had one pick and i guess it is jalen hurts 650 rushing yards 4.6 carry eight touchdowns as well but still we had the better record in the same division and who won it last year was it burrow pretty sure burrow won it last year when we were 15 and 2 and still put up ridiculous numbers he had 5k yards 44 to 5 there it's quite impressive i can't lie but i think you gotta edge it to us for the record there's just some odd agenda about caleb williams in the media i can't explain it we do win back-to-back -back coach of the years though like we're in a big market we're winning games shout out josh allen i don't know what else i could possibly do check out some devies troy franklin potentially could go up to x factor he does not did i just witness my offensive lineman going up to superstar he won offensive lineman of the year goes up to superstar dev spencer connor does the guy that we drafted three years ago it was He's still 24 years old 87 overall monster what an absolute beast we got nothing else there on the offense but defensively we can see now beverly is only a star and only 74 or only i mean he is only 74 overall too i don't think we got anybody though and the vikings who beat us make it all the way just to lose to the jaguars though 31 24 and this is your super bowl mvp we got about 130 mil here and a lot of it's gonna go to this guy why does he not want to rejoin because of the scheme fit are you kidding me is it that serious to you buddy i mean it was already a ridiculous contract before but now i'm gonna make it very player friendly i mean we just simply cannot afford to lose caleb williams right right <laughs> well, hello what is his problem ezekiel keenan's here as well spencer con oh god okay hold up we got some of the big boys here we got some of the big boys here ezekiel keenan 
What's going on? All right, Spencer Connor. I don't know why he only wants a two-year deal. I'll give you a five-year deal right now. He wants to join us, though, and he's back. Mike Castle doesn't want the worst contract in the world. He's back. We got Willie Gay, Nicobe Dean, Tyre Tart here. I think I'm fine with letting all these guys walk. And wait, hold up. A little 200 IQ move here, but we got Unlocker. Unlock one player in re-signing who is not interested. I'm going to do... Hmm. I'm going to do Ezekiel Keenan. Solely for the fact I think it's going to be easier to re-sign him back. And then we're just going to go ahead and franchise tag Caleb Williams. Ezekiel Keenan is here to stay. And now let's franchise tag Caleb Williams for 60.7 mil. But it's totally worth it. He's 99. He's 26 years old. He's X-Factor. He's won us a Super Bowl. I don't mind paying that. Um, my lot of McCaffrey, Diggs, Justin Tucker. We've got some cool names here. Young Wade Koo, Larry Tunsil, Jaquan Brisker, Mac Jones. And we got ourselves Tyreek Stevenson, Devon Hamilton, and Alexander Cook. Awesome. Now, this defensive tackle, Spencer Abbott, looks pretty awesome. C block shed only, which is unfortunate, but B finesse, power, A tackling. He's only 21 years old out of LSU. We do need to think of a future plan after Dexter Lawrence goes because he is going to start regressing at this time. Look at the combine. First in the first four categories there. Awesome ratings as well. He's going to be my pick here at pick number 28 in the first round. Spencer Abbott, welcome to the big blue. Oh, my. That kind of hurt. Where's the blue right there? We do not have our third round pick, so I'm going to choose Luke Wheaton here in the second round. 21 years old, linebacker out of Florida, 6'2", 228. Ratings are okay. Nothing too special, but nothing too bad as well. But the attributes, A, awareness, B, block shed. Nope, I don't even know why I said that. B, man, play, play rec, power moves, pursuit, hit power, tackling. A, zone coverage as well. I mean, he's got great attributes literally everywhere. We did lose N'Kobe Dean. This guy can be the man in the middle. But he's normal. So I'm sad. <laughs> Recap. And Abbott and Wheaton are 76 and 75, which actually are really good overalls. I think they're both 21 years old as well. So you know what? It's really not that bad. Check out the class. There are three 80 plus overall players. Jaquan Shelton, Russ Pleasant, defensive tackle, and Marco Levi. There were a ton of safeties. We could have got Cameron Harrell there. He's 77 overall. Honestly, looking at the draft, I think we did pretty well with our players. They're both like top 20-ish, top 15-ish. So pretty good value. Hold up. This Graham dude is a superstar development. I'm going to start him right away then. <laughs> I think defensively, we have a little bit more depth now. We got good corner depth. Linebacker isn't looking the best, but Hugh um, Felton here and Wheaton hopefully can take over. Offense is pretty much unchanged as well. I, I think we just kind of choked last year to be honest and yes in year seven now i'm just gonna go straight to the playoffs it's been a long recording session <laughs> honestly every madden 24 rebuild is a long recording session i don't know what it is about this game probably because of training camp and i've just been looking so in depth in drafts as well with the running timer now so i want to make sure i get the right player they, they take so long but if you are still here watching enjoying the video i would love for you to hit a like button that would help me out a ton of course subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we got a ton of rebuilds out on the channel as already and more to come definitely more to come as well as some fun challenge videos as well. I would love to start doing those again. Bye week with a 12 and 5 record? <laughs> Say it ain't so. The league's got parity. Ooh, the Chargers went 15 and 2, but that's the AFC, of course. Yep, we're chilling in the NFC. Look at the Rams here. Drake May. Drake May, I want to see you. This year, we were number two in offensive yardage. Not bad. Defensively, still top 10. I'll always be happy with top 10. Caleb Williams is just putting Aaron Rodgers type numbers up. 4,400 yards there, 34 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. And a 74% completion rate is actually insane. <laughs> Saquon, little by little, little by little, he is starting to regress now. 1,300 yards, 4.7 to carry, 13 tuds. Still a really good season, though. Let's be real. Saquon is an animal. Going to go down with this, one of the best running backs of all time. Terry Good, man. 16 touchdowns. This guy is just a bread zone monster. 1,200 yards for him. Franklin almost gets 1,100. Five touchdowns for him there. Mims with 830. Clifford, 661. Eight touchdowns, though. Is the saving grace there. 114 tackles for Wheaton. He had four TFLs, one and a half sacks. Would love for him to go up a dev trade. Josh Allen had a year. I think the reigning defensive player of the year. And he might win it again. 26 TFLs, 20 sacks there in 10 and a half. Oh, no. I didn't even sort these. 14 for Kibito. Or who? I just combined his first and his last name. <laughs> like I said, it's been a long recording session. Dexter Lawrence, Sexy Dexy, 10 and a half there. Six and a half even for Mike Castle. Awesome. Awesome sack numbers there. Tyreek Stevenson, Deontay Banks, two picks. We just have not been getting many picks, have we? You know, at this point, of course, I want another Super Bowl or two, but I also want a dang MVP for Caleb Williams. I swear I don't know why it's so hard. The Eagles here in their division, they're only nine and eight. Do they kind of have our number? We're one and one in the playoffs when we have matched up. And we go to 2 and 1, 38 22. There, we have another 9 and 8 team in the San Francisco 49ers here. We have a 95 offense, a 91 overall team. We have the better team. We have the better record. We have the better quarterback, no doubt. And we're back in the Super Bowl. And we're going to be playing the Tennessee Titans. You never really see the Titans here, but let's do it. Who the heck is that quarterback? Is it Will Levis? They're 9 and 8 as well. Okay, I like what I see. 
Ooh, I remember they stole Garrett Wilson from us the other year. I bet he's regretting that decision now. I'm just saying, Lam how do you win MVP? <laughs> um, something I thought I'd never say. Brandon Staley is coach of the year. <laughs> Josh Allen with yet another deep boy. Him going to the Giants was one of the best decisions he could have made. Him and Kayvon have actually been awesome together. Luke Wee in is your defensive rookie of the year. I like that. I like that a lot. I don't even think anything could go up on offense. Everything is so, so good already. Maybe Franklin, but honestly, Terry Good's kind of the guy that's going off on in the wide receiver room. But on defense, we should get Wee in here, and we do. I don't think we got anybody else. I'm happy with Wheaton, though, if I'm being honest with you. How is Kayvon actually not going up to Superstar now that I think about it? He's had some really good seasons as of late. And even Deontay Banks, 94 overall with morale, bro. Like, just go up to Superstar. All right, all right. Here in 2029, we got another team in the AFC South. Traylon Burks actually is their highest-rated player, 93 X-Factor. Garrett Wilson is there that they stole from us. Don't forget, Jeffrey Simmons, Je Javier Watson here, cornerback they drafted. Peter Skaronsky's developed. They drafted Joel all in the first year in the real draft class. Russ Pleasant. This is the guy they just drafted right at number four. So they went from pick number four to the Super Bowl. That's pretty interesting. Um, Braylon Allen, their quarterback is Jordan Love. <laughs> Oh, he's not about to have a fun Super Bowl. I'll say that right now. He's going to have Josh Allen, Kayvon Thibodeau, sexy Dexy down his throat. Huh? 7 0. Four. Okay, we get a score 17 14, middle of the third quarter. Defense kind of clamping up now. Need our offense to show up, and that's what they do. Under five minutes go. Let's hop in. Was a little speechless there. We didn't put up any points in the in the beginning of the game there. But here we go. Third and 15. Defense has been stepping up. Jordan Love. Jordan Love. You. Broken coverage. Where's my defense? On a third and 15? We're going to lose sight of Levi. I already forgot his name. Gaffney? On a third and 15. A running back wheel route. Why is Joe Alt the left tackle number 11? That is so disgusting. Tell me you guys saw that. <laughs> How do we let Jordan Love do that to us, man? That is simply inexcusable. And I don't know why my I don't have an offensive coordinator that has X-Factors activated. Saquon, big gain. Right away. Let's go. He's not washed yet. Need points. And here in 2029, Jeffrey Simmons is still going strong. Caleb Williams with the screen pass. Saquon getting his third touch of the drive. And for good reason, he is still that guy. We are in year seven. Giants, take notes. Pay the man. He's your offense. He's your team. He's what sells tickets. Look what he's doing this deep in. It's Saquon again. <laughs> Saquon going out wide here. Caleb Williams in empty with time in the pocket. Has time to maneuver, to scan. It's Dom Clifford first down. Let's go. The boys are cooking. The boys are driving. It's a first and 10 minute and 30 to go on. The 40, no, the 30. It's a great catch. Good chunk once again here. A minute and 10 to go. We do still have three timeouts, so even if we run the ball, it wouldn't be the worst idea. Saquon breaks the tackle. Gets us a first down. Pushes it over the line. Snap the ball, Caleb. It's another screen pass. Saquon has been getting fed this drive. He does get stopped there, though. There goes our first timeout. Once again, going in shotgun here. Saquon's got to be feeling it. We got Dante Law behind him. We could summon Dante Law. He can make something happen. Trust in the youngin. That's a good catch there. That's a good catch there by Clifford. 20 seconds to go on the one. We have timeouts, so I'm not worried. We can even run the ball here. I would not hate that at all. But why would you not have the ball in Caleb Williams' hand? He finds Marvin Mims Jr. in the end zone with just 19 seconds left in the game. That was a hell of a drive. Hell of a drive. Hell of resilience from our team. We've been here before, and you can see it. Odds the Titans take back this kickoff return. Something like this happened to me in my last video. We're going to an overtime here. And we are going to be starting with the ball. Overtime in the Super Bowl. Oh, my. Here we go, though. G-Men on the field. New overtime rules. Don't forget, even if we score a touchdown, they will have a chance and a drive themselves to equalize. So let's go ahead and put them okay. Jeffrey Simmons still going strong. Like I said, though, let's score first. Let's put the pressure on them. Caleb Williams slings it. That's the most Caleb Williams throw. No. Bro, how did he sling it like that? Flick of the wrist. He was, like, on the move as well. Marvin Mims kind of had separation there, but I think the throw was a tad underthrown, and the DB was able to make a play on it. Third and 10 now. We cannot afford to go three and out here. We cannot afford to go three and out here. We cannot afford to go three and out here. Are you kidding me? It's Terry Good, the superstar receiver. Come on, the superstar X-Factor receiver. The chemistry he has built with Caleb Williams is Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams-esque. 
It's beautiful. It's Mac Jones, Demario Douglas-esque. <laughs> um, huge gain, another first down. It's going to be even more than that. Let's go. And this drive very quickly went from 0 to 100. We were looking like we could have been going three and out there but just like that in the blink of an eye we're already onto the 19 and saquon barkley in year seven can i hear it one more time in year seven of this rebuild gets us the touchdown in the super bowl the titans are gonna have one goal we trust our defense our offense just drove down like an absolute horse and here we go the last time we saw jordan love on the field he had a wheel route go for 60 and they equalized in the game that could have been a play there for 33 brings us a second and 10 now jordan love's got to be feeling it now can he perform when the lights are brightest that's the question of the day easy first down fair play that was only Traylon burke's second reception of the game remember he was their highest rated player so our defense has been putting in work jordan love with the bomb and it's a touchdown and it's garrett wilson of course of course of course it's garrett wilson the man the titan stole from us i I mean, oh, <laughs> to give up a bomb like that in overtime after scoring a touchdown is, is disheartening. Good throw, good catch. I mean, he just made the play. Keenan got cooked there. He lost he got, he got, lost track of the ball. He just did. But at the same time, what a freaking Super Bowl we have here in year seven in 2029. 28 28 into overtime. Seven minutes to go. Saquon Barkley is really making a case for Super Bowl MVP if we win this. Just big play after big play when we need him most at the old age of whatever he is in, in RB years. Ooh, that man's like 80, 89 years old now and he's still doing this? Come on. As he's up to five receptions, only 46 yards though. A bit of a quiet game for Troy Franklin. Standards, quick little draw here. Saquon's got room. You got to give a lot of credit to the O-line as well. They have been blocking their ass off. And we got a massive third and four on the 43. Not quite in field goal range, I believe. Caleb Williams is going to drop back. And it's an easy first down, Marvin Mims Jr. Whether it's Caleb Williams or Saquon Barkley, when we have needed the most, they have stepped up with massive plays. Good little rush there by Saquon, but it does bring up a third and four, which is where we were like 30 seconds ago. This time we hand this off to Saquon. Good blocking, great blocking, amazing blocking. Saquon, well more than the four yards we needed. I believe he got 15, which is under three minutes to go here. Is the question maybe to kill clock? Oh no, does a field goal win the game? Does a field goal win the game? Okay, so if both teams score a touchdown, a field goal wins the game. So that drive was oh so very important. They do ice us here. Do I have a kicker? Bro, remember, I didn't draft a kicker. I never signed a kicker. Who is this guy? Oh, no. It's like the Texans kicker last week when they had a backup running back. Don't do it. He makes it. He freaking makes it. Number 15. You are forever a legend in New York. And we win our Super Bowl, a, a second Super Bowl of the video from a field goal in an overtime thriller against the Titans. Holy crap. Let's go. I'm clapping. I'm, I, I literally clapped just manually. Huh? I don't, obvious. I don't know what I'm saying. I really don't. What a freaking game by the two quarterbacks. Jordan Love, 19 for 25, 315, three tuds and zero picks. Same goes for Caleb Williams. He had a little bit, bit less yardage, but came through in clutch time. That's all that matters. And I mean, Saquon might be Super Bowl MVP. Probably not. It's going to go to Caleb, but put up a hell of a game 23 for 146 6.3 carry as well as a touchdown come on marvin mims once again was it not the last super bowl where marvin mims led us as well huge game for him as well as a touchdown dom clifford tora franklin terry good only 60 yards three receptions saquon did well and then defensively tfls we had one for castle graham and dexter lawrence their sack numbers two for josh allen he has had a crazy crazy career after moving to the giants Thibodeau with one abbott spencer abbott who we just drafted gets himself involved no picks of course and it is two super bowls in the past three seasons now it's starting to ramp up caleb williams gets his second super bowl mvp much much deserved thank god we tagged him but i still don't quite understand what the problem is caleb and why you don't want to join us back it's still with nothing literally the financials are fine the historic coach record is good the scheme fit is killing it all i don't understand we just won two super bowls who cares are you still not satisfied i'm gonna give him so much money i'm gonna go up to 24 mil if he doesn't accept this i don't know what he'll accept thank you it's a ton of money he's the best qb in the league he's quite literally changing the quarterback market okay okay terry good we cannot afford to lose but troy franklin and marvin mims are getting or are getting paid already tough to keep him around he does have interest in joining us he's the guy i would I would like to keep the most off, I'm being honest with you. Terry Good has been awesome for us. 
and he's back to stay. It's a, it's a lot of money, but I think it's worth it. Actually, we still have 109 mil left. Who cares? Let's splash it out. Dom Clifford, come back. Oh, Marvin Mims actually is here, and I am going to let him walk. Even though he's been awesome for us in the Super Bowl, don't forget. Sexy Dexy, even though he's still 32, he's only gone down one overall. I think one-year deal is absolutely fine. He still wants to rejoin us. Like I said, I want Sexy Dexy to retire as a giant. I can't see him dancing like that in any other jersey. Taylor Barnett, the center that we got a few years back, probably going to let him walk. We can pretty easily replace him in the draft. Andrew Thomas, however, would be very tough to replace. He's been awesome. He's up to, he's quietly up to a 90 freaking seven overall. He doesn't want to join, so I don't have to um, up it too much. He's back as well. Let's go. Let's run it back. Oh, Josh Allen's here. Josh Allen has been so good. One year deal. He's back as well. One more. I got one more in me, he said. Tyreek Stevenson, Kevin Benson. Yeah, all these guys can walk. Don oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Our 90 rated punter, superstar development, who we drafted, don't forget. Cannot let him go, of course. Dude, if I'm not mistaken, ever since we actually got Andrew Donaldson, we've gone two for three. I'm just saying. And going into the offseason, we need a wide receiver three. We need a center, probably a right guard as well. Saquon, Saquon. I was going to say, bro, no wonder we had so much money. Saquon hangs him up after 12 years, which is an amazing career for a running back, especially until his last his last plays on the field. He was still going as strong as ever, made huge plays in the Super Bowl. What a way to go out. Saquon Barkley, one of the best to ever do it. I'm so happy we were able to get him two Super Bowls as a New York Giant. Rest, rest in peace. <laughs> But of course, don't forget, we prepared for this. We knew the day would come. Dante Laws, it's your time to step up. Defensively, I'm not going to lie. We good over here. We good. Maybe another corner, but everywhere else is solid. I'm happy with it. We got some drafted guys up here. Gordon Tyson, a mixture of Gordon Ramsay and Mike Tyson. That would probably be the most terrifying human of all time. <laughs> that was the most random thing ever. <laughs> Dude, our kicker was 69 overall there. Number 15, remember him. You know what? We're rocking with him. He made the kick at the end of the game. What else could I ask for? So it's going to be nothing too crazy in free agency. We didn't have the most money, so I would like to remain flexible for the future. Spencer Brown and Tony Weaver, welcome to the G-Men. Private workouts. There's a running back at three. Corey Mullins, elite acceleration, change of direction and speed. There ran a 4-3 flat. Is that literally a regeneration of Saquon Barkley? We do need a center. There seems to be really good centers later on, so wouldn't mind a guard either. Look at this guy, JD Blanton. I think we are in need of another corner. I think Joe Priest tried to miss if we stay here looks like the best one hello it may or may not be a new day so what was i looking for here <laughs> if i'm not mistaken we need a receiver are there any good receivers hmm, what about this though what are the odds we play dom clifford at slot wide receiver and draft a guy like rob ferguson because he just looks like the best weapon on the outside b a b a there baba huh? and his ratings do not let you down either great great solid great good and elite strength First one's going on him. And Tyrell Walton here is the best looking center prospect to me. He's the best looking one to me. <laughs> she is very gorgeous to me. And then Kerry Dent, an awesome looking linebacker out of Oregon. Look at the top of the board here. Left tackle, defensive tackle, running back, huh? Yeah, round one and two. Rob Ferguson might be that guy. Walton, nothing too special, but will be good value later on. Okay, the guys I have scouted are not going until way later. So I may just take best player available. And it looks like Tommy Goldsberry is going to be that guy out of Penn State here, 22 years old, right guard. We just need help on on the old line and he looks like he could be our potential guy if you know what i'm saying blue question mark hidden development 93 strength he might be a starter day one and now i think in round two is where i'm just gonna go ahead and take our guy rob ferguson maybe a little bit of a reach but we do know his value it's gonna be good value no matter what right especially at the tail end of the second round the literal last pick of it all rob ferguson round one to two talent hidden development out of notre dame an amazing <laughs> tight end school if you ask me he looks like a beast. I'm going to move Clifford to our slot wide receiver. And this guy might be tied in one in certain sets. You know what I mean? <laughs> looks like we did miss out on the center. The linebacker is also gone. Okay. But don't you worry. We got a backup plan, of course. Out in Booth, a 21-year-old man-to-man corner out of Syracuse. Looks really good. C, zone coverage, B press, B to D man, A to C catching there. Ratings around are pretty solid as well. He actually ran the fastest 44, a cornerback in the class. We do need depth there at the end of the day. This guy could come in. And be something right away. Normal development sucks, but he's going to be our CB4. Just a good piece for us to have. Tommy G ends up being a 75 overall. Ferguson, 74. Booth, only a 69. And then I got a receiver later on. That's a 70. Check out the class. And look at this. An 83 overall. It's the running back. The, the Saquon regen is an 83 overall. The left tackle ends up being 81. I am just quite curious because a, a left tackle at number one is pretty crazy. He is superstar, which is cool. But where's the X factors at? They're so hard to come by. I've only ever seen one. Oh, Kerry Dent is a top five talent. 
Went third round, pick 13. It is only normal, but still, that would have been an awesome piece for us to get. And where are we now? So this was the first year, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, and now year seven. This will be year number eight. And I believe two in the last three years. That is correct. Let's try to get one more before this video ends. If not two, if not three. And why not reveal somebody? We got Goldsberry, Ferguson. Those are only the only two guys that we have. I think I'm going to do Ferguson because the guard is going to play right away. Our tight end that we chose in the second round is... Oh. Okay. Okay, what kind of dilemma is this? How have I gotten into this situation where we have two X-Factor tight ends? <laughs> what? Okay, well, I think it's safe to say, Darnell Washington, you're tight end three now, buddy. <laughs> Goldsberry is going to be starting at center right away, and you know what? So be it. But remember, this is going to be our first ever season without Saquon Barkley after he decided to hang them up last year after winning, of course, the Super Bowl. But hopefully, Dante Lawson can step up. There's a reason we drafted him. We knew this day would come. All eyes on you. Week 18, and we scrape our way in. Third in the division, the Eagles are down bad, but the Commanders, is it their year in the script? <laughs> this season, we were eighth in offensive yardage. Defense was still top five. Ooh, Caleb still put up 4,200 yards, only 25 touchdowns, though, which may be the lowest amount he's gotten so far in us, for us this entire video. Five picks is awesome. 69% complete rate, nice. And Dante Laws didn't have a great year, right? The void of Saquon is really looming ahead of us. 1,000 yards for him there, 10-10, I guess you could say, but he got fed a lot. 3.6 to carry, only eight touchdowns. Combs, dude, had 10 touchdowns, I guess. Shout out to him. Terry Good did Terry Good things. 1,200 yards, six touchdowns for him. Clifford in the slot, remember, 950, seven touchdowns for him. Troy Franklin did not have a great year. Ferguson, not bad rookie year, though, as our tight end. Luke Wheaton did his thing once again. 127 tackles, 17 TFLs, and 22 sacks for Josh Allen. The sack numbers look ridiculous, actually. 22 for him, 16 and a half for Kayvon, 12 for Sexy Dexy. That defense is still at the top of its game. Ezekiel Keenan, Ralph Beverly, Deontay Banks. And of course, as the rating super. Super Bowl champions. Everybody's gunning for us. We got the Packers here in the wildcard round. Finish with the same record. They do not have Jordan Love. Remember, he was on the Titans who we played last season. But they still beat us. <laughs> huh? How? Why? Where? What? The hell? Who are we losing to? Joshua Callaway? Caleb. Caleb, how do you get outplayed by Callaway? Dante Laws, oh my god, 2.1 to carry. We are missing Saquon heavily, and Jaden Reed destroyed us. Not only put up 154 yards, but three touchdowns as well. Are you kidding? Okay, well, there's a weird pattern going on right now where we win, we lose, we win, we lose this year. Next year, that means we win, right? And the MVP of the league is Sam Howell. Quinn Ewers was number two. The commanders went, what, 13 and four. He had 4,540 touchdowns there, and then seven picks. Caleb's had better numbers than that. I don't know, man. Some fishy's going on, and it's not just your mom. Huh? Josh Allen wins depoy again. He has been unreal for us. Dev upgrades. We can also see um, our offensive lineman, Goldsberry. He's only a star, of course, of course. These dual X factors is very nice. This offense is awesome, to be honest with you. We just need Dante Laws to go up a little more in overall, so he gets better, obviously. That's how it works. I... Do not believe we got anything. And look who wins the Super Bowl and Super Bowl MVP, Drake May of the Rams. Of course, 35-14, they beat the Ravens there. No NFC East for the first time in a long time. Actually, the Jags won in 2028. You know what? Now, I ain't even gonna lie. We only got 45 mil left. We got Felton, Sexy Dexy, Josh Allen, Alexander Cook, who... Actually, we only got three guys, really. <laughs> you Felton, I just am not gonna give you that much money, am I? And then Dexter Lawrence, I did buy Fountain of Youth, so that slows progression down for defensive tackle, which is what I did. He's, he ain't going down at all, <laughs> which is awesome to see. Josh Allen, I mean, I feel like it'd be wrong to not bring him back, even though he is 34 years old now. He's still winning depoys every single year and nothing too crazy here we're bringing in outside linebacker eric miller and then doordash desmond now our squad is pretty set besides one position that being free safety we don't really got anybody there there's three good ones in the draft we're gonna do all three of them and i just realized this guy's name is antonio brown <laughs> Okay, there's about a minute left. I've just seen this wide receiver that ran a 425 elite acceleration, change of direction, elite speed as well. We do need a wide receiver three. And I'm not gonna lie, there's some good safeties later on as well. I think Mario Beckford, this guy's pretty good, round two to three. And then a strong safety here, Eric Archer out of Bama. He actually looks pretty good. So you know what with this pick? We're gonna go Isaiah Huff, get that wide receiver three, get some more speed on the outside. The offense wasn't the best last year, a little lower than what I'm accustomed to. Maybe he could make the difference at wide receiver probably not i just fell in love with the speed 
I'm stupid. <laughs> Crazy speed though. 97, 96 XL, 95 change of direction. Round two now and tell me one of those guys I was talking about is still there. Beckford is still there, but Eric Archer is at the very top and he looked like the best guy here. We can just move him or Cam Kitchens around, whatever looks best for us. He has great um, acceleration there, great speed and elite strength. Ran a 4.45, had 23 bench preps as well, bench reps. Eric Archer looks like the real deal hidden development. I think I think it's good that we waited and got this guy instead, honestly. He looked like the best guy there. And pick 23 in the third round, Evan Banyard is my guy. We missed out on the linebacker last year. This guy's 21 out of USC. Looks to be the part as well. Only normal dev, though. And Isaiah Huff ends up being a 75 overall, so he's comfortably going to be our wide receiver three right away. Eric Archer's a 73. Banyard only 67. But of course, now I'm curious to see what those other safeties were. Here's DeAndre Peterson. This guy was right below. Okay. Juan Ross ended up going at 32 to the Rams. He was the second free safety that we had scouted. Also, hidden development goes to the Super Bowl winners. He is only star. And then Antonio Brown went right after him. He's a 74 overall only normal overall though the top two guys are only 77 overall in this class it was a pretty underwhelming one and you know what let's go to midseason and see where we are this season we're four and two currently tied at the top of the division we can go check out devies as well eric archer only a star and it also seems like we're at that point now where caleb williams can't even use any more skill points because he's a 99 in every single archetype I mean, 99s everywhere with 97 throw power there. Play action, actually only 84. That could be better, but literally everything else is 98 plus there. And I mean, attribute wise over here too, 90 excel, 88 speed, 88 change direction. Animal. I wonder how good Caleb Williams is going to be because he is getting touted right now as like the next Mahomes and all this crazy stuff. And you'd take him over 20 starting QBs already. There's a lot of hype around him. I wonder if he can live up to it because when you watch him, he definitely looks the part, but he has had a few bozo games as of late in real life. Not for us because... We, ooh, we actually ended up going 13 and 4? Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. What were we, 4 and 2 at midseason? Then Lions, Bills, Eagles, Packers, Saints there. Huge win streak. Cowboys beat us. Jets beat us here. But we end the game or end the year off with a win against the Dolphins and the Patriots. And we get ourselves a bye week. Isaiah Huff changed everything. <laughs> this time around, offensive yardage number 2 in the league. Defense number 3. What? Dude, we have. We have to win MVP this year. There's no way we don't. 4,400 yards, 39 touchdowns, only two interceptions, and a 75% completion rate. Are you kidding me? MVP, Dante Law, still only 3.7 to carry. 11 touchdowns, though, which is nice. He got a few more yards than last year. Receiving-wise, and good God for Terry Good. Terry Good God, okay, I like it. 22 touchdowns for him, 1,400 yards. He deserves the roundup. Troy Franklin back at his best with 1,100 there. Isaiah Huff, not a bad year one with 800 yards. Clifford, 600, and then ooh, Ferguson only with seven catches this year. We might be wasting that man a little bit. I can't lie. Tackle for law. Loss is 19 for Josh Allen, 15 for Thibodeau there. Sack numbers. Oh my god. And finally, we see Kayvon Thibodeau actually get the number one spot on this team with 20 and a half. He just barely edges out Josh Allen, who gets 20 himself. Two edge rushers in the 20s is crazy. Sexy Dexy 13 and a half. Spencer Abbott even contributes with eight there. Eric Miller, the new signing, two sacks, two interceptions for him, I meant. And Luke Wheaton. And I remember what I said. We won the Super Bowl, lose. Won the Super Bowl, lose last year. This time. If the script has it right, and if I read it correctly, it means we're in for another Super Bowl run. We got the 84 overall Carolina Panthers here. They got a bunch of auto-generated guys over there. Let's go. And remember, this is going to be the battle of the number one overall pick in 2023 and the number one overall pick in 2024. Can Caleb Williams get the best of Bryce Young today? It's 17-3 in the first half already. 24-3. The Panthers and Bryce Young, they're just no match for the juggernaut they are facing today. 31 points on their dome. Lock us our ticket to the conference championship. See you there. And we are going to be playing the Minnesota Vikings. Have we played them yet? I'm not too sure. They're only nine and eight. So they've gone on a little insanity run here at the end of the playoffs. They still got Jetta. They still got Addison and they have Quinn Ewers. Okay, a member and a player that was drafted in the same draft of Caleb Williams, of course. Let's see. Quinn Ewers to Minnesota actually would be pretty realistic. I could see him falling to them and them taking him, especially after Kirk injuring his Achilles and his age and all that stuff. 7-3 here in the first half. 14-3, second half on its way. Our defense has been actually the story of this of the playoffs so far. They have been absolute shut down. Three points only for Quinn Ewers in this stacked Minnesota Vikings offense absolute blowout hell the way we're playing right now we're blowing out every single team give me any team you want 
we're gonna kill them it's the jacksonville jaguars the team that won the super bowl i think two or three years back but of course we have the utmost confidence in caleb williams finally wins himself an mvp long long overdue if we can get the super bowl and the super bowl mvp this year as well it'll be a perfect season hell yeah <laughs> oh and terry good wins offensive player of the year i think that's the first time we've seen him there jo josh allen again we got the top two in offensive player of the year and defensive player of the year quick debbies here if we got any that is everything on offense is pretty much as high as it can be already maybe isaiah huff could have gone up to star that would have been nice but i'm not expecting that eric miller goes up to star the new signing somehow cave on thibodeau after a 20 sack season does not go up to superstar hello what else do you want from the man jaguars the team right below us as well makes it nice and easy t law is a 99 overall now 31 years of age now malik neighbors is here they drafted tyson campbell andre Cisco, trayvon walker still got some of their guys as well as anton harrison cameron shelton travis Etienne is 32 years old now would have been fun to see him with saquon barkley going head to head brett herbert some other auto generated guys but they still have a bit of their core montez sweat dj more they have some bears got an old wash michael pittman jr here they definitely got a good team good overalls as well but they're facing a juggernaut now we're on a heater i think you could put any team in front of us and i would got us huh? i would got i i would have a, you know what i meant and let's kick things off at mercedes-benz stadiums it looks like we get the first touchdown of the game in the first quarter we get two touchdowns and our defense once again is showing up the jaguars we hold them only to three dude this team is unbelievable another field goal for them they cannot convert inside our red zone a third field goal field goals aren't going to win you the game against us because it's 35 to 16 now and we are going to hop in for the first time haven't played any snaps with this team but i think we got a comfortable enough lead for me not to throw it away you know what i'm saying look at that we got a beautiful ball by caleb williams it's dom clifford first and 10 on the 27 now dime dime it's dom clifford again and we get two plays and it's all we need we find ourselves in the end zone this team right here i think it's safe to say we're building a dynasty we have a dynasty we're in the midst of a dynasty you kidding me i just hopped in and did that who am i <laughs> it's the good flex the jugs are driving down it's a little too late though one second remaining 42 16s and once again the script writers were cooking with this one we win another super bowl it's our third one now after year five i believe we're cooking one more oh my god yep kayla williams with the most perfect year you could ever ask for and had a perfect qbr in the super bowl 18 for 20 361 yards five passing touchdowns to zero interceptions absolutely ridiculous dante law has even got himself over four carries shout out to weaver who found the end zone in this game isaiah huff was our leading receptions leader with five there got himself in the end zone too dom clifford troy franklin terry good you already know man dante laws had a 68 yard touchdown okay the boys are just cooking man no tfl's weird but sack numbers josh allen who else one and a half for him eric miller who's been a standout player for us in this year after we sign him cave on gets a sack too sexy dexy and tell you what before we go check out who won super bowl mvp which is honestly going to be one man <laughs> i do not want to miss out on either josh allen or dexter lawrence potentially retiring on us like saquon did and us not being able to check out their stats josh allen 34 years old now so he could hang him up pretty much at any moment this guy has been an absolute game changer on the defense 20 sacks in three straight season is absolutely unheard of 17 and a half sacks here we signed him when 2024 so the very first season we got him in and he has just been he's gonna go down as one of the best defensive players of all times with the numbers he has put up here in the big blue josh allen salute to you but of course the guy that makes life a little bit easier out there on the edge is dexter lawrence 33 years old now still a 99 overall with morale and from the idl he's still putting up double digit sacks like it's nothing had 15 in 2027 sexy dexy I ain't surprised with what he's doing he's one of the best and i was curious to see if josh allen would be on here for the all-time sack leaders he is in the list with 166 here we got a few um you know new school players as well micah parsons max crosby aaron donald leads the way with 214 tj watt number two i mean he's fresh off a few deep boys in a row he's still got a few more years in him retirements did we have any dexter lawrence is gone that is exactly why we went ahead and checked him out and made sure to give him his flowers check out his stats as a whole dexter lawrence i said i wanted him to retire as a Giants in three Super Bowls later he does he does absolute legend hit it for me one more time sexy Dexy 
And yeah, Super Bowl MVP, of course. Who else? And for contracts, Dante Laws is here. He does want to rejoin us, and he's up to an 86 overall now, which is pretty cool to see. I think I got this dude in like maybe maybe the end of the first round, but it could have been the second round as well. He's back, of course. Cam Kitchens is here. He has no interest at all for whatever reason. Warm weather state, New Jersey. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't control the weather. We'll bump it up to eight mil, see what he says. It's still a no. Gabriel Graham is here. Double G is the superstar guy that we drafted. Actually, I don't even think it was me. I think it was the CPU that drafted him in the later rounds. He's going to be staying staying with us. Ooh, Kayvon's here. Kayvon, 31 years old now, does have green interest in joining us, so a two-year deal would be sweet. Ooh, Deontay Banks is here as well. He's actually regressing so hard because he was like a 91 overall the other year, like maybe two seasons ago, already down to an 83 for the sake of this rebuild and him being a Giants um, first-round pick last year. We're going to re-sign him for one last year, which I believe will be year number 10. Andrew Thomas wants to rejoin mm -hmm. us as well. Of course your problem last just one more year bro josh allen the real josh allen will bump up the money it's green interest anyway he's back for one more season come on one last ride boys one last ride i think we pretty much got everybody we wanted back paris johnson's gonna walk that's fine with me we're gonna go ahead and franchise tag andrew thomas Let's see if we can go all out for one last year and hopefully go back to back. It's something we haven't done. Just checking out the class real quick. There was a tight end at number two. Imagine we just have three superstar X Factor tight ends out there. <laughs> the number one player in the class is also a tackle out of Ohio State, Dion McLean here. What are the odds we trade up for him? And that's our Paris Johnson replacement. It's the final year. Things might get crazy. And in free agency, we ended up getting a 33-year-old Jalen Johnson. Mike Castle is back with Dexter Lawrence gone. He's going to have to step up once again. Michael Walden to be our new free safety. And John Schmidt says, I want one too. And to be honest with you, I think I might make the move up for Dion McLean. That's if I even can. Honestly, this is going to be very difficult. <laughs> and the Broncos are the number one overall pick. This has to be like the 937th version of the newest worst game ever. <laughs> Could you want anything for number one? Terry Good, Terry Good, Dom Clifford and Troy Franklin. Just, I don't know about that. I don't know if I can give up my guys, but I am willing to give you pretty much every single pick. We have a first and second in the next three seasons. It's still not really even that close. All right. <laughs> well, then looks like a change of plans. Is there anybody else? Alfonso Hill was projected top five as well, and he looks maybe even better than Dom McLean. Got to check the mock drafts to see where these guys are actually going to go. It's actually going to be the tight end that goes number one. And then... Ooh, where is our guy? Hold up. Alfonso Hill is all the way down here at 16. I'm still going to play it safe, though. Let's go up to pick number eight. And they just want picks. That's good with me. It's the last year, baby, because I'm out of here. After this, whoever is after me can deal with this dumpster fire themselves. <laughs> And pick number eight, Alfonso Hill is still here. He also is out of Notre Dame, so he was teammates, actually, with Rob Ferguson, our tight end X-Factor, of course. And Rob told me... This guy's even more special this, than him. They have the same development trait. He's going to be our starting right tackle for year number 10. Hidden development. We are going to be revealing him. Well, in my head, I was going to transition that into we're going to be revealing him right now, but I, I kind of want to check out the class. <laughs> Ooh, he's only a 73? Okay, that is not great. Clemens is a 79. McLean's a 75, though. Only two ratings higher. Is hidden development. Goes to my Dolphins at number two only a star imagine we traded up for that guy highest rated player in the class was Bo Clemens you know what I am curious to see what he is I don't think I've ever seen a tight end go number one he better be crazy he is x-factor but tell you what we got Rob Ferguson in like the third round so which value is better there all right let's go ahead and reveal Alfonso Hill and let's see whether I traded up for the next Lane Johnson or Evan freaking Neo Deja Vu it's Evan, but here we are boys final year season number 10. We're off a of Super Bowl as well We've won three already. Can we make it four and you know what? Let's spice things up a little bit Let's go ahead and go game by game week one. We are at home at MetLife against the Dallas Cowboys And we beat them 35 17 and even get ourselves a weekly award winner. It's Caleb Williams five passing touchdowns He's looking to go back to back with the MVPs week number two We got the Arizona Cardinals once again though at home at MetLife. They are 1-0 as well Week two, come on, we won 35-24. We have another weekly award winner, it's Caleb Williams again. What is he cooking this year? Goodness gracious, we're looking to break all sorts of records this season. Your week three, of course, of course we lose to the Steelers. Week four, away in Dallas now, we beat them 21-20. Week five, the two and two Baltimore Ravens here. 24 to 7, the three and two Minnesota Vikings up next. We beat them 35-14. 
What in the world's going on here? We have a rivalry game, a breakout QB, next man up. Caleb Williams is still getting breakouts, and he can't even go up any literal more because he's 99 maxed out and everything. Week 8 against the Eagles here away. We beat him 23-17. We're on an absolute heater. Can we go 16-1? 35-17. You already know who this is going to be. You already know who this is going to be. And it's the two guys that have been the cornerstones of this entire rebuild. Caleb Williams on the offense. Josh Allen on the defense. Week 10 away against the Washington Commanders. They're 4-4 four four currently. 42-14. Hold up. Hold up. It's K Oh my god. What is he doing this season? He is literally going to have the best regular season of all time. But even if he does, we're still not satisfied with that. We want the Super Bowl here. Week 11, we beat the Eagles 38-17. And guess what? It's Terry Good. Seven receptions, 133 yards, four touchdowns. Hello? The squad is just absolutely clicking on all cylinders. Week 12 here against the Cleveland Browns. 42-24. We are 10 and 1 Caleb Williams again if I had a dollar for every time Caleb Williams wins a player of the week I would have enough to pay him um, out of pocket myself we lose to the Bengals there 26 21 however we do have another weekly award winner and it's gonna be Caleb freaking Williams <laughs> actually insane but no 16 and 1 for us but hopefully 14 or 15 and okay never <laughs> oh look at this we have a quarterback duel it's of course the um the Rams with Drake May the QB number two after Caleb Williams went in 2024 but we get the best of him once again 21 17 we're now 11 and 3 in week 16 just three games remaining in the regular season it's a W against the Niners and it is going to be another oh no it's going to be Spencer Abbott with three sacks okay that caught me by surprise week 17 against the Saints they're only nine and six 34 28 and Caleb Williams is another weekly award winner we are also in year 2033 and Max Crosby is still not taking snaps off it looks like <laughs> Week 18, Super Bowl rematch here, if I can recall, against the Jaguars, 23-20. We end year 10 off with a 14-3 record, comfortably top of the NFC East. And what got into us this season? Offensively, of course, we were number one. We saw us run right on every single team. Defensively, fell off a little bit. Not surprised with Dexter Lawrence gone. Oh my god, this might be the best season single season performance i've ever seen out of a player in any of my rebuilds um so far i'm at in 24 4800 yards almost 5k there 48 touchdowns and three interceptions with a 75 percent completion rate caleb williams just went absolutely crazy dante law still doesn't get over four a carry dang it. eight touchdowns 3.9 a carry almost 1100 yards for him caleb even on the ground 422 5.7 a carry as well as two tuds that is one of the best qb seasons of all time and terry good with one of the best wide receiver seasons of all time 1600 yards 22 touchdowns again for him troy franklin almost gets 1300 isaiah huff 13 touchdowns this year for the second year man almost 900 yards there dom clifford dante laws and we're wasting this x-factor man i can't believe it <laughs> he's just glad to be on the journey and tackles made 153 for luke wheaton almost doubles the number two there for jalen johnson for whatever reason josh allen this guy just doesn't stop 20 tfls 19 sacks for him in what th the year 35 now for 13 years in the league cave on Thibodeau with 14 abbott steps up with nine and a half with dexter lawrence now gone mike castle four and a half as well interception wise only four for the entire team that was an absolute historic season and in the divisional round we got the nine and eight dallas cowboys this mean games this what am i saying this game means more than just the playoff games we want to absolutely batter the cowgirls because you know what they say the season don't mean a thing without a ring. We're at MetLife here. Score the first touchdown of the game. 7-3 in the first quarter. We get a quick touchdown in the second quarter. Field goal once again. 17-3. And it's our defense once again in the playoffs. Stepping up. Holding the Cowboys to two field goals in three quarters. And our offense can go crazy themselves. 24-6. It's not even close. They don't even find the end zone once. Mike McCarthy. See you later, Bozo. <laughs> they have Cameron Ward. What in the world? Another quarterback from the 2024 class, but there's levels to this big guy. NFC Conference Championship. We got the San Francisco 49ers. They are 11 and 6. I wonder if Brock Purdy is still the guy running things over there. Nick Bosa, Hufanga, Ayuk. They're an 87. We are an 89. Let's see if they can hang with the big dogs because right now it seems like nobody 
can stop us. I trust us versus just about anybody. Okay, though. They do get the first touchdown of the game. That's already more than the Cowboys had all of last game. They get two. It's 14-17 here in the third quarter, second half on the way. We get another touchdown to go up by 10 points there. They get a field goal. We got a close one here. With just under four minutes remaining, if we could get any sort of points here, I would be feeling a little more comfortable. Dante Laws just short of the first down, but he is having a spectacular game with almost 150 yards. I feel like it's been so long since we've hopped in because our team has literally just been blowing everybody out. It is too good. And Dante Laws gets us the first down just barely, though. As we should be good here to at least get three points bar a bozo move by Caleb Williams as the clock runs down. Dante Laws goes absolutely nowhere. Fourth and six, we should kick the field goal, and we do to go up by 10 points. Ladies and gentlemen, I can already smell it. Let's lock in our ticket to the Super Bowl in year number 10. Dude, this team is unreal. Caleb Williams might go down as the GOAT because the resume this man has and he's still under 30 is absolutely unreal. We got the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl here. The fraudulent Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. Don't forget MVP. Would it be anybody else? Terry Good wins another Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Tui Molau. Is that how it's pronounced? I don't know. Josh Allen, number two. Ooh, Andrew Thomas, best offensive lineman. Goldsberry, number two as well, you know. And let's go check out some quick devies here to see if we got anybody offensively. I don't know how Troy Franklin or Isaiah Huff didn't go up. Andrew Thomas goes up to superstar, though. We would definitely take that. That is very nice to see defensively. Graham goes up to superstar X-Factor, huh? Deontay Banks, <laughs> better late than never, finally goes up to superstar. Oh, Luke Wheaton also went up to superstar as well. Shout out to him. Is there is there a reason Graham went up to superstar X-Factor? <laughs> I don't even remember reading this guy's stats. He had 47 tackles, two TFLs, no sacks, no picks, five, five deflections, no forced fumbles, <laughs> huh? Might be the most Mickey Mouse dev upgrade we've ever seen. <laughs> Let's go check out the Bills, though, and see how they're rocking 10 years into this thing. James Pleasant is a 99 overall corner. Josh Allen still doing his thing at the age of 36. Still a 98 overall. Gregory Rousseau, 98. Parker Swinton, defensive tackle. They got Victor Montague, Tyron Thorne. A lot of auto-generated guys here. Obviously, guys like Diggs are gone by this time. Osiris Torrance has developed nicely. They have Jake Moody, James McLaughlin. Yeah, just a bunch of auto-generated dudes. Dalton Kincaid, Kincaid is still going strong. Never went up to Superstar. And, um... <coughs> I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but um, our team should absolutely bully them. With the way our team has been performing, and not just in terms of wins and losses, but the, the fashion that we're doing it. We are dominating teams. We are shutting teams out. They're barely scoring any points on us while our offense is getting 30, 40, sometimes even 50 points. However, in the Super Bowl here, it's going to be a close and tidy game. 21-13 to 13 in the fourth quarter now, fourth and four. And our offense is going to be punting the ball, giving the Bills a chance. Eight-point game, still a one-possession one as well. Josh Allen with a play action, slings it through the middle. Dalton Kincaid wide open, but I can smell a holding from a mile away. I saw it from up here. Gives us a first and 20 now on the Buffalo 10. Josh Allen drops back once again, and it's this close, one yard away from a safety. Kayvon Thibodeau, 10 years in, is still going as strong as ever, putting up ridiculous sack numbers and showing up when we need him most in the Super Bowl to potentially go back to back here. It's a second and 28. The Bills are going nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Show me a safety. And fourth and 23, under four minutes to go. They are going to be punting us the ball. I like a big play here. Little play action to Dante Laws and let Caleb Williams do his thing. He can either run it himself or throw a bomb. Dante Laws actually is going to be short. Ooh, what are we going to do? We're going to kick a long field goal here pretty far out. Maybe 45 to 50 yardage here. A little bit scary. I'm not going to lie. We also get... No, nope, that's a two-minute warning. I thought we got ice. I was about to say, honestly, a fourth and one with this team, with this quarterback, with the season he just had, we probably should go for it and just try to clinch it out that way. However... We trust our kicker that I drafted. I think just two, three seasons ago, he came out as a 71 overall. Ice in his veins. Ice in his veins. Oh, we know he missed. Wait, what? Wait, I was so confused. He just missed. What am I talking about? Ice in his veins and all this stuff. He missed. Oh, no. Now the Bills have a great chance to come down and drive and potentially tie this game up. I was giving him all the dang flowers in the world, Josh Allen. What an absolute brick by 83. Why did I think that was so good? I don't know. Third and one, Josh Allen dropping back once again. Almost a pick by 52, but here we go. 
fourth and one Super Bowl on the line they do still have three timeouts but given this field position I would trust our team against just about everybody Josh Allen I'm not sure who that is number 38 the superstar but he makes a massive play denies the Bills a first down and ladies and gentlemen we might have our fourth Super Bowl of this rebuild Buffalo calls their first timeout if Dante Laws can just get the first down we clinch ourselves Lombardi number four ladies and gentlemen victory formation this team later on in the second half of this video just went absolutely crazy genuinely felt like we just built an unbeatable team an unstoppable team Caleb Williams at the helm of it all wow an absolute dynasty if I say so myself and the celebrations are off once again here at Hard Rock Stadium. We have gone back to back to end off this 10 year rebuild. There is no better feeling than that. And Caleb Williams might go four for four with Super Bowl MVPs, 25 for 35, 244, 241 yards, three passing touchdowns, once again, zero interceptions. Dante Laws was also really good. Five a carry there, 65 yards. Troy Franklin, eight receptions, 75 yards. Terry Good, 63 yards, three touchdowns. He might mess around and get himself the Super Bowl MVP, you know. And a part of me hopes he does hold up. Hold up. I'm talking. I'm worried about the offense. It might just go to somebody on the defense named Kayvon Thibodeau. Four sacks. He had that one at the end of the game as well. That was massive for us to uh, make them punt the ball there. Kayvon. That is, a, that is a Super Bowl MVP if I've seen it. And you know who won't get the Super Bowl MVP? Eric Connor, our kicker, who bamboozled me, and I thought he made the field goal. No, he went 0 for 1. You fraud. <laughs> and the Super Bowl MVP in 2032 is going to go to Kayvon Thibodeau. Much deserved. And ladies and gentlemen, I would say that went pretty successful, right? And after 10 seasons, I think it is time for me to hang it up now. We have built an absolute dynasty one of the best teams the league has ever seen and it all starts with caleb williams 99 overall still just 30 years old which is quite young for a quarterback came out as x factor has 99s all over the place there he it's safe to say lived up to the hype i mean i'm pretty sure he came out the gates blazing as well rookie year 4,000 yards 39 touchdowns 10 interceptions 29 to 7 39 to 7 41 to 7 here with almost 5k yards 33 touchdowns to just one interception i mean i don't think he threw over 10 interceptions bar his rookie season for us in this entire video i mean these last few seasons were just unreal three um interceptions there two right there almost 5k yards check the awards out as well i mean <laughs> offensive player of the week yeah we saw all of these this year he led the league in passer rating three times was offensive rookie of the year 2026 2027 2029 best qb 2031 he won mvp in 2031 and 2032 as well as best qb here as well had seven pro bowls which is kind of kind of a little lower than i was expecting to be honest with you of course was the number one overall pick in this video we traded up for him remember we traded up a ton of picks to go up to number one but it was definitely worth it. I'd do it again. Dante Law has even developed into a pretty solid running back nowadays. Came out as superstar dev, but a 90 overall now with the two morale. But of course, the main guy there for the majority of this video was Saquon Barkley, who retired, I think, in year seven after we won the Super Bowl. He was insane. Went out as one of the best running backs of all time. And honestly, one of my favorite picks in this whole video had to be Terry Good. We got our own version of Scary Terry, except on crack. This guy was insane. 29 years old now, out of UNC statistics. He's incredible. 99 catching, 99 catching traffic, short, medium route, 99 as well. He is also currently the number one ranked wide receiver in the entire league at a 99 overall. And the chemistry that we saw him and Caleb Williams build was something special. We got him in 2026, straight out the bat, 1,000 plus yards, 10 touchdowns. Did he have double digit touchdowns in every single season? 2030, he only had six, but the next two seasons, he responded with 22 in the each of them as well. Had over just about, he had over 1,000 yards in every single season as well terry good was actually unbelievable and we chose him in the second round i forgot about that at pick number five if i'm not mistaken did we trade up and get him and i think he came out of star development made the pro bowl five times some offensive player of the weeks offensive rookie of the year offensive player of the year best wide receiver and then once those again in 2032 troy franklin we also got very early on in the same draft class in the second round of caleb williams of course in 2024 and he was as advertised as well was caleb williams right hand man throughout this entire rebuild we had him for pretty much the whole thing thousand yards in the rookie year he had 1450 in 2027 with 11 touchdowns 
rounds too. He was extremely consistently brilliant for us. Shout out Troy Franklin, Skull Ducks. Watch out for him in the draft. You know, I think he could fly up the board. Tight ends were pretty fun. We got Dom Clifford. Did he come out as Superstar X Factor? I can't quite remember, but I, I, I think he did. He never really went too crazy for us because of our schemes. They didn't really, you know, run a lot of plays for him, but he still did his thing, still developed into one of the best tight ends in the league nowadays. Shout out Dom Clifford. And we also got to shout out Rob Ferguson, who we drafted just a few years back, came out as Superstar X Factor. We didn't really utilize him to the best of our abilities, but he was here for the long run, got himself a few rings, you know. <laughs> we got Alfonso Hill was an Evan Neal regen, which is not what we wanted at all. Goldsberry was nice, though. Looks like Schmitz left on us. Um, Spencer Connor. I think, is it Spencer Connor? Spencer Connor was an animal. Went up to Superstar as well after winning Best Offensive Lineman the other year. He's um, into year nine now. We've had him for the long run in this video, and he's developed into one of the best left guards in the league. And you could say the same thing about Andrew Thomas as well. He went nowhere. We locked him down, had our franchise tackle for this entire video, which definitely helped out Caleb Williams and the overall offense a ton. And defensively, I'm not going to say it was equally as good, but damn, it was impressive. We saw Josh Allen's stats. He's 36 years old now. I mean, just literally four straight seasons of 19 plus sacks he won countless and i mean countless um defensive player of the years there i think let's see he won it in 2025 2028 2029 2030 2031 insane josh allen insane absolute revelation and his partner in crime Kayvon thibodeau was actually really good as well definitely lived up to the hype as the number five overall pick especially in the latter half of this rebuild i think the first few seasons were a little bit fraudulent i can't lie four sacks five and a half five and a half three and a half six and a half but something got into him in the 2027 season where he said i'm gonna change this around i'm gonna go up another level 11 sacks 12 sacks 14 sacks it just kept going up 16 and a half 20 and a half in this season 14 Kayvon developed into an absolute monster to say the least we also got to say a big shout out to dexter lawrence who was the man in the middle this whole time he was an absolute beast got himself three super bowls as well but retired out on a high spencer abbott mike castle shout out to them ezekiel keenan we drafted pretty early on i believe was only star no i think he was superstar right off the bat he's developed into a 91 now deontay banks we managed to keep around this entire rebuild he's a superstar 84 now grayson's here booth is here who we have weldon at free safety i think this was cam kitchen for a little bit we had xavier mckinney before that of course as well eric archer who was our strong safety i actually don't even know i think we had the dude we drafted like mcgee and then it was cam kitchens after that linebackers were pretty awesome as well this luke wheaton guy that we drafted has actually developed into an absolute beast 92 overall superstar dev now graham is a fraudulent x factor i don't know how he went up to that but he's awesome and eric miller actually came in and contributed nicely as well and also shout out to not eric connor he's kind of a bozo but donaldson the superstar puncher generational guy that we drafted and i think year four or year five whoa our poet and i didn't even know it actually he's been in the league for seven years now we got him in 2026 but i swear after we got him is when this team really started to cook i'm just saying <laughs> and i do kind of want to just see some all-time stats caleb williams numbers look absolutely ridiculous he almost has 40,000 yards now he'll get that in the next season for sure 327 touchdowns to 45 interceptions 71 percent completion rate throughout his entire uh career as well bonkers Dante Law's all time kind of mid. Caleb Williams on the ground, though, over four point any carry. Even found the end zone 24 times. We know he can do it with his legs as well as his arms, of course. Troy Franklin, just four yards short of 10K. That would have looked nice here. 66 touchdowns for him, though, but Terry Good was the red zone machine for us 101 receiving touchdowns for him over 9,000 yards with 620 carries there dom clifford really good as well and isaiah health two years in not too shabby who else did we have here i think we had marvin mims for a little bit as well but i think it was really the majority troy franklin terry good those were the two guys and josh allen yeah 185 and a half sacks for him now we will check out the sack leaders um all time 113 for cave on thibodeau is not too shabby as well tfl is 211 for him 136 for Kayvon interceptions Deontay Banks ends off with 15 there you love to see that is he Keenan only with eight an NFL record defensive sacks Max Crosby actually leads the way down with 215 Josh Allen is here though with 100 
185 ahead of guys like Miles Garrett, Vaughn Miller for passing touchdowns in a single season. Of course, we see Caleb Williams, which with the year he just had in 2032, 48 touchdowns. And of course, receiving touchdowns, Terry Good gets in here twice at number two overall. Unfortunately, was not able to get one more to tie Randy Moss for the most of all time. Ooh, and defensive sacks, Josh Allen gets in here, gets in here as well for the most in a single season with 22. That, however, is going to be wraps of this 10-year New York Giants rebuild. I hope you guys really did enjoy. If you are still watching, that means a ton. Of course, leave a like, leave a comment as well. Those things mean the world to me. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already and enjoy this type of content. I think this will go down as one of my most successful rebuilds of all time four super bowls in 10 years is mighty impressive we built an awesome juggernaut of a team defense and offense and led by caleb williams was um an awesome watch as well he was truly incredible i'm gonna leave it off with him on the screen hope you guys enjoy like i said take care everybody see ya get our hands on him, I will.